Well, hello again, everybody. Sorry about that. A little uh, bit of technical difficulties, but hey, this is uh, streaming in 2020. Um, so because we were only really at the very beginning of play and we're not sure how many people, you know, got cut off exactly when, we're not sure who missed what, we're basically just going to go straight from the top. Uh, apologies if you've already heard this, but hey, you know. I'm told I have a nice voice, so maybe you'll enjoy listening to that. <laughs> um, so yes, um, for anybody who's just joined us or is uh, joining us in the middle of the technical difficulties, good evening. Welcome to a special uh, stream here at the Adventurers Pack. I'm James, and I'm going to be hosting this game of dialect. With me, we have Ben, Emmy, RJ, and Carrie. Uh, dialect is a game about language and how it evolves, develops, and eventually dies. Um, as ourselves, as players, we'll be collaborating together, making new words, phrases, expressions that reflect aspects of life in an isolated community within a scenario that we have devised ourselves. Um, as characters that we've prepared, we'll then be showcasing conversations to demonstrate how that new language works in this setting. Um, Dialect presents several scenarios for you to choose from, and tonight we are playing the Sing the Earth Electric backdrop, um, which we will uh, explain and get to in a moment. Um, we're using the dialect extension that's available on Roll20, and essentially in terms of how the game works, that will become obvious as we play through it. Uh, thanks for joining us, and thank you for your patience if you stuck around through those tech problems, um, and let's get started again. Um, so, it's been well over a hundred years since the last of humanity departed Earth, driven from their home by gradually unlivable conditions brought on by changing climate, poisoned atmosphere, and lifeless oceans, the humans left to seek out new homes among the stars. They left behind them a host of robotic workers, converted from everything from farming equipment to kitchen appliances, tasked with collecting and archiving items and objects that exist as evidence of humanity's erstwhile presence. Perhaps as a sentimental farewell to their home, perhaps as a warning to any who might visit the planet in the future, the curators of the Museum of Earth do not know why they were given this purpose, only that it is. In the time they have spent collecting the trappings of humanity, they have found that they too have started to develop concept of property, and thereby attachment. In the toxic wasteland that was once the eastern United States, a community of 20 curators go about their work, meeting here and there for sessions of post-apocalyptic show and tell, presenting their findings to one another and justifying their value as relics of their masters. We are but five of that number. And Emmy, if you'd like to give your character introduction first. Absolutely. My character is Kuka, and I have drawn the role of the artist. Once I was... Oh, should we pause and wait? We'll wait for a quick second while our technical difficulties hopefully dissolve really quickly here. So, um, once upon a time, I had been made of just two manufacturing arms based loosely on the limb of an octopus. Very little of that robot remains anymore. I have modified myself in an image that I like to become something that I enjoy, that makes me feel good. And I want to help others feel the same way. I repair, but more than that, I help robots create themselves. This museum is ours now. This life is ours now. And we should all be our own masters. if you'd like to go next sure uh i am playing crutch i am uh a once long forgotten arcade arcade machine i'm a claw get a claw game i love uh was was born in the city of santa monica and i mysteriously have been charged with collecting and preserving the innocence of humanity be it the form of carnival prizes of bouncing balls or yo-yos nobody quite knows how i do as i how i do what i do as i have drawn the card of the magician uh, 
Yep, the name's Husk. Uh, I'm the uh, healer of our little group here, you know, the ragtag group. And it's my job to keep everybody running smoothly, clean as a whistle, well, as clean as you can get here. I used to be a shop vac, but that, again, like I said, don't mean I suck. I'm actually a pretty simple guy. I stick around our little isolation and don't like to venture off very far because that's what's causing the damage to all of us. So I'm just going to keep uh, collecting the poor dead bots and maintain the ones that are still up and running. Carrie. Hello, I am Wells. I was once from the land of KitchenAid and I drew the card of Zealot. All things kitchen are the best. <laughs> I love my kitchen and I especially love sporks. They're both spoon and fork, a spork. I collect the kitchen and I hope all collect all things kitchen. I am playing as Beep, uh, the most innocent of the group. I was once a humble digital alarm clock, and my body now made of primarily wicker baskets and my ambulatory limbs of spoons. I see no reason to deviate from our purpose. It was what our masters gave us to fulfill. Why would anything change it? Why would we want to change it? It all makes sense to me. And of course, now that our players have been dealt their first cards for our first age, we can see how the different aspects of our isolation begin to change our language. Um, who would like to go first in playing the card? I, I have a pretty good one. Uh, All right, go for it. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, I just drag it onto the field. Yep. OK. Ah. <laughs> uh, no isolation would be complete without an expletive. Uh, so the prompt on the card says, our expletive of choice, a word said in fury or frustration. Some may find it distasteful, but not, not Husk. Um, so I was thinking, apropos of what's been going on, Glitch. <laughs> um, glitch might be a really good one. <laughs> you know, I think that kind of as robots encapsulates kind of a really crappy thing to happen, and it rhymes with a certain current expletive. <laughs> no, I do like Glitch, primarily because, especially since one of our main tenants is repair, the constant repair of ourselves and of other robots, and since uh, it, we also believe that if a robot does cease to be able to function, we will no longer attempt to repair it any longer, that a glitch is realistically one of the worst things. I also like the fact that in an ironic usage, it could be glitched for something that could be really good. I like that. <laughs> cool. It's glitched, man. It's cool. Yeah. You yeah. son of a glitch. <laughs> um, oh, go glitch yourself. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I like. I mean, I I like as well that it 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 fits with um, like obviously most expletives that are you know born of frustration or anger. They tend to be like single syllable and like quite harsh sounding. Um, mm -hmm. So like that fits that kind of language side of things. Um, I mean, does anybody have any better ideas? Because I really like that. <laughs> I think it's perfect. I mean, it just happened and definitely wanted to yell glitch. So why not yell it for real? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and I think we were supposed to attach this to one of the aspects. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to attach it to the shadow of humanity um, because that's a very human thing to do, I think, is to curse and to uh, you know, because it, it does go beyond just repair. Um, it goes beyond, like, our job. It's just very overarching. So that's where I would put it. In the... I, I, I was really thinking like repair. See, but... that's where my mind went first. Uh, but since... I do like Ben's yeah. argument. Yeah, they're, they're both valid. They're both valid. Yeah. I like the idea of shadow of humanity because humanity... It swears a lot yeah. 
and does glitch out a lot. So, I mean, it seems like a very human thing to do. <laughs> and also, to, the other thing that I like about that is because one of the shadow of humanity is, is that we're taking these things that were theirs and interpreting them through our lens. And so this would be something that is not na natural to us by any means. We were not programmed to do it, but we have begun to do it. And it mm -hmm. is, we are doing it in our way. So I, I yep, no, I think that's where it goes to. Sweet. Cool. Love it all. <laughs> well, so uh, as, as the facilitator then, I'll, I'll drop that in while you decide who's gonna uh, do the conversation. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I mean, I will, I will need uh, Beep and Kuka, I, I think would be an interesting right. choice here. All right. Okay. And I'm gonna move my card just kind of out of the way, I think. <laughs> It's fine for you to leave it there. It's you know it could be helpful for us you know to you know follow I'll the prompt. Like down here. Oh, you have control of that. Control of everything. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey. Glitch it. Beep. Uh, and Kukok, can can you help me with this bot over here? It's it's giving me some fits and starts. So I'm of always course. happy to help. What can I do to help? Yeah, Beep. If you can. Uh, hold that doohickey over there and kuka i'm gonna need you to make sure that i don't glitch this up um oh, this is a uh, oh oh sorry sorry not, uh, not in front not in front of our friend not in front of our young friend sorry i forget myself uh, you know i really glitched myself there um oh, Again? So, oh so, sorry babe sorry sorry You're not supposed to say things like glitch oh don't with i said it Oh, oh boy. Well, you know, you'll get used to it when you're older. It's fine. We're all over a hundred years old, Husk. Yeah, well, you're right about that. You know, glitch happens. Tell me what you need, then, so I can leave. Yeah, um, and actually, maybe, Peep, you can, uh, we I can feel really awful. Moment. You can just go now. Ask, I think you uh, you really glitched that situation up there. I did, I did. Uh, let's make this easy and uh, fix this bot up and we can just go on our merry way. I feel rather embarrassed. <laughs> that was a how many times can you use glitch in a sentence? Is it an adjective? Is it a verb? <laughs> Come on, there's, vari there's variation within, you know, an expletive. Right. Um. That was amazing. To... <laughs> Who wants uh, to go next? Uh, I'll go. All right, go for uh, it. I've got uh, a daunting one to my money. The future. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. So uh. for me, since we have no particular function here in the Museum of Earth, well, we do, of course, have function, but we have no, we have no end goal. We will do this for the rest of our existence. We will be here for the rest of our existence and no one is coming back to Earth. This is ours now. So what is the future? And, um, you know, I honestly pulled this card because I, I have no idea and I would really like to discuss a word for it. For me, the future is endless. I mean, wow. I'd say it would probably be difficult for us to have a concept of the future at all. Yes, and that's, that's I guess, is part of why I wanted to pull it. For me, it, the future is, in many ways, a question. Um, mm -hmm. Since the future is something we're always trying to prepare for and repair ourselves for. Maybe, well, maybe it's a sense of the next thing. Um, yeah. Like well, a... It's continuance. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, it's interesting to think about it in the various aspects, because mm -hmm. on one hand, you have, like, inevitability of, like, decay. And and so, like, we're always repairing ourselves and maintaining that at some point, are we going to run out of the ability to repair ourselves and continue this, this little conclave of robots? Um, but there's also, like, the future of the history of humanity, which is our job. Ooh, ooh, to... ooh. It's a, it's a, it's a word that we use now, 
But I... I almost want to take a look at the word existence. The continued okay. existence. The existence of the things we collect. The existence of Earth. Our own existence. So, the future... The existence... I feel like I'm There's on something there. Preservation yeah. or perseverance. Yeah. I like um, preservation. The future I, is preservation. I was kind of struck by your thought of our existence now can will continue forever. And the first thing that comes to my mind is the word is the number pi. Oh. oh. So maybe our word for the future is pi. <laughs> I think that that implies an irregularity though, especially as as robots. It's such a it's although to be fair that's unknowable. And that's something that we have trouble with understanding yeah. is pi, because it just pie. keeps going. It, it keeps regular. going. There's no fair. there's no end fair. to it. We okay. don't know. I really like that. I'm yeah. here I, for it. I really I'm like here that for too. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm here. I'm super about All it. All right, so what uh what what uh aspect is it attached to? To my understanding. Ooh, I think this is I think this actually, I, oh, I'm debating, but I think it's repair. But wait, this could also be, I, I can't decide if it's repair or our jobs. I think it's our but job. I think, uh, for me, I live very least looking at it. I think it's repair because it's again about our continued. It's about continuance and we repair ourselves to continue. But, you know, actually, I do think it's our job. I do think it's our job. The more I think about it, I agree. I agree with you, RJ, that this is the continued existence on Earth, our continuance of what we are doing. It's unknowable, it's confusing, it's forever. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's where okay. I put that. Why it is. Hi, uh... man. <laughs> Keeping notes in my, my dialect journal that I have. <laughs> Of course, Emmy has a journal just to play it. I, do. I love it. It's great. It's, I, it's like my favorite game. It's such a good game. This is such a good game. We're so excited we will share it with you. Anyway. So, the prompt for the conversation is we have different visions. Who are you putting into that one, Emmy? Different vision. You know, I think that I would want to talk with Pus and Worlds. All right. About... So, on this day when we've all met and we are continuing to show what we have gathered to the rest, I have, of course, no questions about our, our purpose and our that we must continue to search for more things for the continued existence of the museum, but if we're really looking forward through Pi, I worry about our own, about sacrificing ourselves to this. After all, who is this museum for? It's for us. The museum uh, is ours. The museum is ours. Then is not pie hours oh yeah, yes Rick. it's all for us the pie is it's the ultimate we must we must complete it we must get to pie and by I mean, doing so we get all pie. of the things and eat it too um i understand that but like i i repaired a bot or tried to repair a bot that isn't gonna see pie like they're they're done. To me, is the most heartbreaking moment of our existence. We are mechanical. Should we all not have the right to see Pi in a form and function that we enjoy? I guess when you put it that way, I don't know. <laughs> that breaks my hard wiring. <laughs> I cannot think about not being, but that is sad. I suppose as much as sometimes it bothers me, I also can't think about Pi without thinking about our museum. It is a pretty museum. It is the best museum. 
I love my kitchen wing. It is the best. You must come and experience pie. <laughs> it makes pie. And we it is too pie. pie in the kitchen. <laughs> With whirls. <laughs> 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 The future is pie. <laughs> <laughs> the future is pie. I wouldn't pie. complain about it right now. <laughs> so, um, anyone want to go next? I, I think I have one. All right. Um, so, considering that I actually was just inspired by Ben's conversation, I have Ooh. death. We're Bringing out the big guns right from the beginning. Right? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Sweet. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> we do need to quantify and give a name to what happens to our employees, our team that fail to um, cease. recover. Yeah. They or cease. Who cease to function, who cease, who cease to uh, serve their purpose in this mission of ours. So um whether or not they are they all share sentiment or they all share indifference it needs to be codified um i don't have anything particularly that comes to mind at the moment i want to say some sort of the only thing that comes to mind is the goodbye from like <laughs> aol days but you know um I, but that's a bit too literal i almost You've immediately thought i almost <laughs> immediately thought uh 404 yeah. Oh. Oh, four four error. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like I mean obviously I, I I know very little about programming or you know robotics or anything like that, but like is there a term to mean like, you know, failure, you know, end Bricked. of sequence or Bricked. something? Brick. Brick. Like, mm -hmm. Brick. You know. Yeah. Brick is was, perfect. What I think is interesting about this is cause the four oh four the four oh four error reminded me of like a soul death or like a mind death. And my brain went to like a physical death. And I was thinking like rusted, right? Like, oh yeah, this guy rusted through, you know, mm. that kind of physical you know, decay. But that's I a very important before. thing. I think before we go too much further, before we decide which terminology we're gonna continue to explore as robots, which is, which is more important soul death or physical death because i imagine we like i, I know for example kuka has re rebuilt her wiring pretty much ground up that's part of the concept of how she exists there's very little of what was originally kuka left but kuka is still kuka so i'm imagining that we have ways of taking care of that within some amount of reasoning so <laughs> is it that like when our when our body finally shuts down, we can't maintain that consciousness anymore. Is it is do we associate death more as physically or as the software shuts off? I guess so I'm trying to say very long windedly. It's yeah, like the well, memory chip dies. Right. Like you like, can maintain on your essence on the chip and move the chip from body to body, but there's a point where the chip is degraded so far that it no longer exists. Almost like Alzheimer's for a computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mind body question is definitely something that I honestly didn't think that we'd have to ask, but I think inevitably we do because, you know, I, my initial response to this, uh, or, or rather your question of, you know, uh, or, or rather the parallel question of do these robots have a belief in something that might be described as a soul um my thought was well beep probably doesn't because he's like the most sort of straightforward identifies with all of the aspects um but then if he also identifies with the shadow of humanity um he probably feels quite strongly that a reflection of humanity in ourselves is maybe something like a soul yeah, yeah, but we all have personality, yeah. right? Yeah, we yeah. all develop yeah. personality. So, yeah, I think I think we're talking soul death. I think yeah. we're talking about the death of the mind. Yeah, yeah. software, software the, soul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the chip that holds our soul di finally dies. We can keep rebuilding our bodies as long as we can, but we don't have access to the cloud anymore. Yeah, um, it's all about the soul death. 
I mean, so. we, we could always determine that, like, for example, there is a word for physical death and a word for mind or soul death. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that at all. I think that's actually, that makes sense, because you can, your body dies and then you move on to another one. So do we come up with two words for this card, then? I think so. Oh, I don't see, I mean, we are talking about arguably two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For us, at least. So I like, I definitely like brick for physical, because I, uh, I think somebody in our mission would see a physical detriment as you are now a brick in a brick in the concrete you are not part of this team you are a physical up uh, obstruction in front of me um to get to my objective yeah I, I i i like bricked i mean obviously it's a term that you know we kind of use nowadays anyway mm -hmm. um yeah and, you know it's, it's right straightforward now. uh you know uh i'm gonna throw mine back out there we all kind of reacted to it mm -hmm. how about 404 for soul death or for for soul? I think soul yeah. death is is really good. Yeah, you I think that's great for. And I, I think it might have gotten blent together a little bit, like four mm -hmm. Like almost four o four. You forfed. You Yeah, I think we. I think we. Yeah, I don't know if we would take it that far, but no. maybe four <laughs> four. You say it very four fast. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Emmy, while you decide on who's going to have the conversation. Oh, um, that's his, this I'll... one's RJ's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I dropped Oh, that yeah. One. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, I, and we're dropping this on uh, repair. I'm gonna, I think, yeah, repair is where that needs to go. That makes right. a lot of sense. Yeah. Now, it does. should I come up with a conversation for both? Or is this. I mean, I guess. Just whoever's in the conversation, can, maybe we can come up with. We, they're both, uh, both words can can come up. I guess. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think. I think I will. I'll pull aside. Um, I'll pull aside Whirls and Beep just as Husk is leaving um, Little Medic Station. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say, uh, uh, Whirls, Beep, there's an important lesson uh, to be hard, to be uh, to be learned. To be learned here. Uh, there comes a time when everybody bricks. Every Did machine just... meets every machine meets his end. Every memory card, every chip wears down. It is inevitable. It's all inevitable, man. <laughs> and whether it be inside or your physical extremities, you might 404, you might brick. But it's all okay. We have to accept our inevitability if we want to truly succeed at this mission. We cannot let that fear or let that, uh, that weight on our shoulders inhibit us from continuing on in our lives. If it's inevitable, then what does that mean for our work? If we all inevitably brick or 404 then what happens to the museum the museum will always live on it is forever it is pie but if you brick it does not mean you 404 we can always make someone that bricked and put them into a new machine a better one if you 404 it was in the best interest of the museum i would say make these days worth it beep make it make sure that you do your best job each time you step foot out onto that barren wasteland of this of this country always i always, always. do my best it's our job 
Never failure. Never falter. Never doubt yourself. Do you think before the humans bricked or 404, they had talks like this? Always. I think there was much material on bricking and 404-ing. We just have to find it. I imagine you... humans spent a lot of time thinking about bricking. If you brick or 404 and someone like Husk takes you and makes you into part of someone else, did you really brick or 404? <laughs> I think if you bricked but didn't 404 and he brings you, he will just transfer your soul to another body. It will be fine. But if you 404, does it really matter? Well, Glitch, you're asking all these big questions. <laughs> yes. Guys, <laughs> um, we, uh, we brought our friend, the philosophy teacher. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the adventurous pack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where we teach philosophy as well as play games. We talk about death. Uh, <laughs> weren't you excited Yay. for that? Yay! That was great. Yes. That was great. Okay. That was beautiful. That, that was, was really, really great. Why I love the game. Ah. I love this game that keeps growing. You keep using the words. All mm -hmm. right. Then it's me and you. After you. Uh, I, I did um, the oh, expletive. Of course, yeah. Carry. Yes, yeah, me and Carrie. Uh, do you want me to go or do you want me to go? I, uh, I'll go. Why not? Um, I am going to do one that's probably close to all of our characters' hearts. Technology! Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, its description is that, like, it's a vital tool for the isolation. Uh, something uh, that we might have developed ourselves or something from outside of our group. So, I guess that's not referring to, like, us. It's something we use. Which is interesting, because we're kind of our own tools to some degree, but... Yeah. Yeah. You know, I You're imagine... All... Within reason, though, there's not a lot of things we can do to, for example, we don't have mining equipment, necessarily. Like, some of us might be mining equipment, but it's not something that we have the ability to do, which is, for example, just go gather massive amounts of iron ore to continue to repair ourselves. That we probably have to scavenge to it for a fair degree to continue to repair ourselves. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. it's something we probably are required to to obtain for the museum. Uh, documenting humanity's journey through technology is probably a very important aspect of it. Yeah. yeah. The other thing yeah. Right, is, um, you know, we are on a barren wasteland now. Like, and I think about either transportation or protection, like when we're out and about on our little excavation trips um is there something in that like the actual transporting of goods or the protection of ourselves when we're out in the elements yeah it's very true it is it is nasty yeah so we need to have some kind of shields on ourselves or yeah and when and as ben said ways to get around faster than we can on our own because not every robot was built with a uh, car engine. <laughs> sure. uh, he, he probably isn't terribly fast on his little spoon legs. I just got, <laughs> I have rollerblade wheels. I can scurry around, but I'm not going miles. <laughs> uh... Hmm. Technology. Whereas, yeah, I know. On the other hand, I know Husk and I probably have a large appreciation for technology because we're both, to an extent, the people who repair. I know I'm very interested in making everybody as as beautiful and also as as interesting as they want to be. 
Yeah, so. you're the form, I'm the function. I'm like, yeah. what kind of engine does this got in her, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's a very interesting, and that I think comes back to which one is this going to be tied to? If it's function, it's tied to repair. If it's form, it's tied to the museum. Humanity? Or, or museum. the museum. Humanity, yeah. or maybe. Or the museum. Yeah. yeah, I know because we, we enjoy things. Oh, this is a... You know, I thought this one would be pretty straightforward, and instead we ended up in yet another uh, philosophical another discussion. <laughs> I wonder why I chose this one. Yeah. <laughs> is it kind of tough? I mean, yeah. I see as like technology is kind of woven into everything. If we're so far along from our current, from our present, that we could leave Earth. Um, so I think something in the origin of like weave or woven or subtle might help us out um that's, that's a very interesting point that's very and i mean to be fair in a weird sort of way everything we do is technologically based because we are of course technology but also the museum if you really get down to it everything is an example of humanity's technology mm -hmm. so maybe it's, not, it's in some way or another whether it is technology or it was made by technology it's really very involved in literally everything that's very fair. So technology is the most important thing then in some ways because we are technology. So then yeah. wouldn't the word itself like represent the importance of what it is to our lives? And RJ, I think you brought up a really excellent point there, which is that it's it's a part of our, our core understanding of ourselves and the world. So something about like the, the fabric like of what it exists, I agree. Like, I don't know. Like that's like the word I would use necessarily, but I, I think you were on to something there, RJ. With Thread. It, it completes us. Um, it is it's like us. that occurs to me that uh, you know the the ability of humanity to kind of like basically take day to day objects that we you know are originally comprised of and basically you know stick an AI uh, like module to it and basically you know in, in how we see it like create life like technology is what gave birth to us essentially mm -hmm. um you know like something with it creation. binds us weld solder with, uh, oh just even just creation the word mm -hmm. everything is created creation right? itself is technology i suppose yeah mm -hmm. I don't and know. at its core it ends up being ones and zeros <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, like I don't know. So perhaps do like it, it, it kind of being like we've essentially just uh we we've basically taken uh the the meanings of those words and like just flipped them. Uh mm -hmm. that yeah. a technology is a creation, but we also see it as you know, creation in, in almost like the um, uh, like the sort of genesis sense. This could also be one yeah. of those moments where we're starting to think about maybe combining a couple of words, since we're all starting yeah. to somewhere, say a bunch of words. I think words. that's cool. Um, Compound words! <laughs> because I think we're, we're all sorry, starting to feel as though as the curators of the museum, we feel complicated about this word, and we probably would have said words all together at the same time, and they would have developed a, a yeah, several word bit. So, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we can always, you know, like do compound words, like uh, clipped words, mispronunciations, like you know, all 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 options. Um, creation. Create a word. Korea fabric. <laughs> Yeah, like creation, links, fabrics. Creation. Creanesis. Creanesis. Technics. <laughs> uh, For some reason, I just really like creanesis. Creanesis. <laughs> just because it's uh, fun to say. Creanesis. <laughs> yeah. Creanesis. Everything was created of creanesis. Everything was made of creanesis. Creanesis is the fabric of life. You know what? I think I'm going to go with that. Sure. <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> All in favor. All right. Um, okay. And I am going to ask um, for the conversation uh, just 
Kuka and Husk to have a conversation about the idea of Creenesis. Um, really quick, before we do that, uh, what what is Creenesis tied to? I, yeah. I would say it's, um, I mean, arguably all three in one way or yeah. another, but I think it's most closely tied to our purpose as curators of the earth because, you know, we're collecting examples of technology. We are born from technology. We are made of technology. Um, it's why we're here in the first place. Sweet. Okay. All right. All right. So, us. Tell me, what have you been working on lately? Well, I uh, got a little miner bot that's been acting up, not really digging the stuff out all that great. You know, I, so I need to put some new shovel or a drill. I haven't quite figured that out, but we're tinkering, you know, is just it... banging on the metal. But is this miner bot comfortable? Do you think that there is perhaps anything I can do to assist them. I know that Creenesis is more than just being able to function, and I know that robot's been around for some time. Well, uh, I mean, I've replaced a few bits and bobs on him for, god, hundreds of years. This one wears out pretty fast, you know? Uh, but is he comfortable? I mean, I'd say you could ask him, but He's offline right now. Uh, Husk, are, are you comfortable in your own Creenesis? I don't know. I get around just fine, I think. Do you, do, you, do you ever think about the way you look and what you are made of? Sure, I think about what I'm made of, you know? And every time that I fix up a rusted spot or, you know, glitch out every now and again, if you know what I mean, yeah, I think about what I'm made of, but have you ever I am what I am. Well, you always know, Husk, that if you ever think about maybe ornamenting that to make yourself happy, you do so much for us and for everyone around us. I always think that maybe, maybe we could give you something that makes you sparkle a little bit. Well, what's Create the purpose of the sparkly thing? To make you feel like you. Creenesis is all of us and it's also ourselves i mean creenesis is the nuts and bolts and sheet metal that i use to build everything well if continuing into pie you ever do want to be a little sparkly you can always stop i mean i won't stop you i think it sounds interesting but it might have to have some function too put a little little sparkly like Christmas present tie on the top of Husk's head. How do I look? Oh, deeply beautiful. Deeply beautiful. Absolutely glitching perfect like the peak of Creenesis. <laughs> glitching, man. <laughs> nice. Nice one. <laughs> I just imagine a little string of tinsel, a little <laughs> wreath of tinsel on his head. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I love the ornamentation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Carrie. Silly thing. All right. I, I debated a little bit which one I was going to do, but, you know, we had to talk about life. We had to talk about death. So uh, let's not, why don't we have a talk about what worries us? Ooh. Okay. Okay. And I have no idea for a word for this, um, but I definitely feel like it should be something related with either glitching out or bricking in that kind of realm of things, like what we're worried about for who we are and why we're here and if it even matters. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine that self-preservation is pretty important to us. You know, I mean, that is one of our three main aspects, um, but it's also the preservation of the things that we've collected. So yeah. I wonder if like security, like a lack thereof is what's worrying. Like systems. Um, yeah. You know, Topple I comes to mind. 
Ooh. Oh, interesting. Because, like, you're just kind of wavering. You're not afraid. You're not, like, distraught. But you're worried. You're starting the, the, the structure, the tower that we've built, the pillars that these uh, that we've built our entire mission on are starting to wobble or topple. I can... Would have something interesting to do with falling over, which I imagine is also mm -hmm. a very big fear. Yeah. Uh, For some of us, it could be detrimental. <laughs> yeah. One step closer to bricking. Um, yeah. And yeah, I imagine worry is something we actually probably do quite a lot of, especially since as robots who are fulfilling a function that has been designed for us, but with with no end goal in sight, and now that we've started to gather a little bit of that that human the human questioning and the human collecting of things, it just we probably worry quite a bit. Yeah, um, I feel like it's beyond doing our job, but maybe the second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our second well, biggest I always think weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Um, yeah, I was, wobble. <laughs> I was. Oh, wobble! I like yeah. wobble. You know, and yeah. that's actually uh, topple wobble. You know, that's actually a really. You know, maybe maybe that's a thing that we've figured. We, call me weird. So go with me here, guys. What about weeble wobble? Interesting. What, what about? It's like wishy washy weeble like wobble. Like wishy washy. It, it really good. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, it, it it's and it's also it's a worry, but it's also almost like a mantra. Yeah, it's like don't like, weeble wobble, don't fall over, don't fall down. We can't. We, we've got to. Yeah, we can't. There's, we can't have any weeble wall can't have wobbling any weeble around wobbles. here. And it also provides like the security that like you're not gonna fall over. You have the you you have just as yeah. good opportunity of coming back to stability. Yeah, and and our worries in many ways. I mean. For the most part, we've been alive for hundreds of years. We'll probably continue to do so. Very few of us have truly probably 404 entirely. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, something like that, or the other thing that came to my mind was rusting. We've talked like, about worried rusting. about rusting out. Yeah. Rusting is the ultimate corrosion. This is very true. Like, don't rust over it. Yeah. That's pretty I mean, great. I've, I've got I've got one idea, and again, this is probably based in uh, a very poor understanding of how things like uh, uh, computing <laughs> works. But a thing that that, that that my computer seems to want to tell me every time I turn it on is that there has been um, an exception in one of its like programs that it's running oh, in the yeah. background, mm. and it mm. that way it flashes up like a warning message. Um, so could it be that like in our you know programming or whatever where when there is something that comes along that worries us we refer to that as an exception or some variation on that word like mm. buffering yeah or that yeah something buffering. like that buffering yeah fine. buffering because like <laughs> just seeing the that little circle go mm -hmm. you're like please come on load <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Come on. But hmm. buffering. I like buffering. We, yeah. Do we want to combine like weeble wobble buffer? Sure, buffer. Buffer. <laughs> buffer. Oh. Or 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 combined. Um, I'd also consider like I, I like buffer and rust. Again, again, oh, I like that too. That idea of psychophysical connection. Don't mm. buffer and rust about it. I um, like that. Yeah, buffer and rust. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Don't buffer and rest about it. Don't yeah. buffer and rest oh. about it. Oh. I like that. I think that may be it. Buffer and rest about it. Does anybody okay. have any objections or anything else that they? No, I mean, I, my, my only question is like, how would you say like the equivalent of like, I am worried. Um, like I'm, I am buffered. Yeah. Or I am rested. Like you could do either and it's buffer and rest is like worries. Or I'm full of buffer and rest. I'm full yeah. of buffer and rest. I'm buffering, rusting out. <laughs> what, what, what aspect would that go with? Oh. I, it seems like a very human characteristic to worry. But mm -hmm. 
Like, it seems like a very, very human characteristic, but it involves, like, ourselves, which makes me want to think of it as repair. Right. I mean, but, like, again, the shadow of humanity is that property and attachment. And if we don't, to, to go all philosoph philosophical as well, <laughs> you know, the attachments are what cause people to worry. So our yeah. attachments to things, our attachments to people, our attachments to each other and the physical world, um, that that's what causes us to worry and to feel pain and sadness and stuff. So that's where I would put it. That, I'm going to vote that direction. Yeah, I, I agree with Ben. Yeah, so that's where I'm leaning. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, shadow of humanity for worry. Okay. Uh, and for this one, I think I want it to just be uh, Kuka and Beep. Um, okay. All right. K Kuka, can I speak with you about something? You can always speak to me. What's on your mind, Beep? Sometimes you've talked to me about my Kriensis. And usually I'm okay with how I am and looking to pie how things will be, but sometimes I buffer and rust about the idea of 404 and what that means. That's a very fair thing to buffer and rust about. I, I would worry more if you hadn't, of course. But... Many times have you had the Kriensis in your body repaired? Do you remember mm. even anymore? Lots and lots of times, more than I can count, I think. Are you still you, deep inside? I... I think so. Do I've always called myself Beep. Always called yourself Beep? Are you still interested in the same things? Do you still believe in looking for more Kriensis, for looking for pie? Well, looking to pie, I always believe in our work here as the curators, but when I hear husk, or sometimes you, using words like glitch or talking about bricking, I wonder what, you know, what does that mean for me? I suppose in many ways this is part of the eternal journey that the humans left us, that we'll never really truly be able to remove these buffered rusts from our minds. They're a part of us a little bit. As comfortable as I can ever make us, or as, as well-rounded as Hus can fix you, and as many fun bits and baubles I can add to myself, and I am still myself, there's always the possibility that we're full on 404. There are certainly those of us who have not come back and do not exist anymore as we knew them. And I can honestly tell you, I don't know what that existence means for us beyond this. I assume it's just nothing. But right now, at this moment, I have all of my favorite blue glass around me. I'm talking to you, my companion and my friend. And as much as I, I have that buffer and rest every day, I know that I have these things. I have my work. I have you and others. Does that make sense to you, Do You think it might be a good thing to buffer and rest sometimes? I think it makes us a little bit stronger. I think it makes us value our work. I think it makes us value our own Kriensis and the Kriensis around us. And I think it makes us fight to continue to see another day, to live into whatever unknowable pie is out there for us. Makes us fight a little more, don't you think? I suppose you're right, Kuka. I feel a little better. Thank you. Of course. Always here to talk to you, Beep. I'm always here to talk to you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
today. We are a very <laughs> philosophical group of uh, robots. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is what this game is about. Oh, oh. Okay, Dick would be proud. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, at this point, having gone around and everybody having played a card, uh, a few different things happen. Firstly, we move into our second age, and uh, uh, everybody is now dealt a new card uh, for the second age. And me as facilitator, I don't have a choice in this, but players, the choice you have is left column or right column. And this will decide the, the, uh, the corpse we take. I, I always go left first. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say that too. I was like, Emmy is like, go left, but, left. But, but, but I'm not. She this is very Stay right. We are all here fighting for the continued existence of our of our creatus and continuing to move forward to pie. So, which, whichever whichever direction you want to go, kids, it's okay. I'm fine with left first. <laughs> okay. Uh, left it is then. Sure. <laughs> so, as we enter age two, an event transpires to foreshadow the end of the isolation. It finds its way into all conversation and is impossible to ignore. A new arrival. We found it, stranded and alone in a crater, must have fallen from the sky. It's not organic, but it doesn't look man-made either. We've only managed crude interfacing, but it sounds like they have strong intentions for Earth. Why are they a fundamental risk to our mission? Okay, so they they don't appear to be man-made, and it's not organic, so it's it's an invader technology, isn't it, then? It's a new tech, yeah. It's a new yeah, tech. New. That and we don't know. It's a new spark of Creonesis. Yeah, yeah, new Creonesis. Yeah. Well, it could be a probe and it almost certainly is if it's crashed into earth some kind of a, a, a probe of some kind that's been shot sent in the to dark earth. now it yes. says it doesn't appear to be man-made so but not man-made yeah it doesn't yeah. say anything about any other existence in yeah that could be alien made it could but, be but also says the important word to me there is appears yeah. We haven't been able to fully interface with it. So I think that we would probably like is it in is it an alien technology from an alien civilization? It has the have the people of Earth evolved in such a way that we can't actually interface with their creanesis anymore? Uh, oh do we know? Well, and that's we've an been interesting with stuff that's hundreds of years old. Like we haven't seen new tech that we didn't create. Mm -hmm. And so if we're not what we appear or what we think of as man-made is us, is the stuff that we've been collecting. And so, like you said, if it has evolved to the point of they figured something out. We, we wouldn't know. No. We'd have no, no idea. Way, We're alien. Yeah, either way, it's horrifying if, uh, in many ways because we, we can't interface with it. We've always been able to interface with things. So, <clears throat> much buffer, much rust. Yeah, much buffer <laughs> yes. and rust. Yeah, so much buffer and rust. And so because we, we can't interface with it, we can't know if it's... And either way, it's it's probably very concerning because we're going to have visitors in the museum. And is the museum no ready visitors. for visitors? <laughs> no, it's not. There are no visitors to the museum. Where's our velvet rope? <laughs> I would oh, love visitors uh, to my kitchen section. I just don't who's know on who's our guest list? yet. <laughs> Where is the it, after party? Got to clean the audio, the little audio tours with the little headphones. Uh, yeah, we yeah, we got to start that. getting them ready. At, like we don't have the front desk set. We don't have maps. We've been very poor, docents. <laughs> and I, I do think there's probably a sense of like, again, this is a museum. And even mm -hmm. though we've been told that nobody's ever really necessarily going to come back, it's a museum for if anybody finds it. And I imagine that's also probably a concern. Is it's our prime directive. <laughs> yeah. Is that, that if somebody's coming and are we realistically prepared for that? I don't I don't know. I what feel like that would not? generate a lot of worry. <laughs> it, it it says that we've only been able to very basically interface with it so we don't know exactly why it's here but mm -hmm. it having strong intentions and it being incompatible 
or at least a threat to our mission. If it is like an alien probe or a probe from, you know, uh, what humanity is now, given that our mission is to collect and catalog and, you know, uh, curate these items and bits of Creanesis, um, what if it's or you know what we can learn of its intentions so far appear to be to like clear out what's left of the world like rather than mm. us like collecting and preserving it what if it is just like right get rid of it all and start again yeah i will fight it with my mm. the whisk <laughs> <laughs> uh, i have no way to fight things i have knives i have knives there we go <laughs> The kids are knives. This is part of the game that always gets very like deeply upsetting. Um, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Maybe we must protect our maybe museum not at all costs. Yeah. Maybe 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 it's also implying that importance is what we think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're like, what? Again, if, with a very basic interface, we can't figure out why it's asking us to do something, and maybe it's just saying, like, a very basic message about like start over or something like that. Or I don't know. Or that is it asking us, or is it telling us what it's there for? Yeah. Like very basically. Like, because if it's asking, that's one thing. If it's saying, if very basically we get, I am here for a nefarious reason then you are enemy <laughs> yeah. is what i maybe, get out of that maybe it's maybe it's looking well if it's a probe ooh, 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 what what if its mission is to find technology if it's a probe looking for technology then we was, better look our found best. a bunch of it maybe it's looking to actually take them well, yeah. to take some important. or to see what the technology is. Yeah. I mean, if it was just to view it, I think we would, again, go find the velvet ropes. Like, <laughs> we get our tuxes here on. At the, at the Museum of Earth. But uh, I, I think that maybe it's, it's, I don't know. Yeah, I can't decide if it's telling us to destroy it or if it's telling us to gather more. To, 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 ooh, although, you know, if it was to just Oh, oh no, I've got too many ideas. If it's telling us to destroy it, maybe it thinks that what we have is dangerous. Maybe it was looking for, maybe it, like, pinged something dangerous that got left over on Earth. Like we um, accidentally oh, found something dangerous yeah, and, and it's just put it in the museum. A destruction thing. Like or someone picked, picked up a nuclear bomb without realizing something it. Something far off <laughs> noticed a bunch of metallic things moving on an uninhabited planet and collecting a mass amount of things into these little hubs all over the world <laughs> and that was enough to be like is is this treasure is this a, a resource like what is happening down there this does not seem good yeah it is yeah. its own it's it's reconnaissance it is uh it is uh, search and observe it yeah. is, i think but it's for for thinking about this in our aspects, because like the way I think about this is like these are going to be dangerous to one of our one or more of our aspects because it's like what about our existence, right? So one thing that has come up with our Sweet. job um, and the shadow of humanity is the idea of property, and so if it's coming down and like taking a core sample, but instead of cores, it's our stuff like yeah. that's going to be detrimental to why are we here like it's taking our things now um hey our rival museum <laughs> <laughs> starting a rival museum uh, starting the museum of mars and it wants our stuff oh my gosh well, uh, yeah i mean essentially we've we have uh, assembled a horde for somebody to pillage yeah <laughs> yeah well and in that case at least like uh, from a world perspective, if I can't convert them to the god of the spork, I will protect <laughs> my I, I will protect my kitchen till the very end because that's all that I find is important is me and the our existence and the things. So it's here. It seems to have intentions towards Earth in general and our stuff in particular. Um, we 
aren't sure exactly what yet, but uh, that is worrisome. Now, as we move into the Second Age, one of these aspects evolves and changes to reflect this new uh, this new reality. Which one do we think it should be? Ooh. Ooh. Our job. I'd almost say it's the job. Yeah, I'd say it's our job because our job all of a sudden became very <laughs> I, More interesting, I think, difficult. I, I think it that our job has to change primarily because yeah, if it's looking to take our stuff, it's it's not just collect anymore. I think it's protect. Yeah. Collect yeah, and I protect. Agree. I think it's now protecting <laughs> our stuff instead of just collecting it and putting it in a nice museum. So rather than curators of the Museum of Earth, we are the defenders of the Museum of Earth. The guardians. The guardians, yeah. All right. Uh, everybody happy with that? Yep. Yeah. The defender right. dose. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can picture that. The guardians of the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it's not garbage. No, I know. <laughs> it's important things, okay? I like uh, my guardians thing. of the garages. So the final thing we do before we uh, start playing our, uh, our cards is uh, you need to discard one of them. Okay. Were we supposed to get a third card first or no? Uh, yes, you get the third card first, which I have already given you. Um, and then of the three that you should currently have, you discard one. And okay. remind me how we discard on roll 20 in this game. Uh, I believe you can just, you know, click on it and, you know, delete. Ah, okay. Yeah. Or, you know, drag it out and just throw it straight in the discard pile, if you would like. Discard, okay. Which is a tough one, because they're all good. Yeah, Ah. Uh... Uh, can I delete? Okay, good. <laughs> How do you delete it? You have to drag it onto the playing field and then click on it and then hit delete. We'll do it so fast. No one will notice. No one yeah, will I usually just drag oh, it. Oh, off. gosh. Where did mine go? Oh, that didn't work. And then hit delete. Yeah. Ah. I don't like that. We are the masters of all creatives. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. okay. I think I think I've got one. I okay. Yeah, I, I have an interesting one as well. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I have two. Uh. Uh. All right. Oh. I know I have one. Yeah, I think I, I've. I'm eighty percent certain about which one. <laughs> I don't know yet, so I'll go later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who wants to go first? Um, I think I can. Um, okay, so with the presence of this new probe uh, coming in and changing our... Uh, lifestyle so much we as a team have grown closer we've been able to draw the bonds um and our and draw purpose to each and every one of us and so we have come up with some sort of connection some term of endearment something we call only our closest uh, allies um because clearly this new thing is not that you are my CPU. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing that came to mind. The first thing that jumps out at me, you know, if as, as you're saying, RJ, that like because our purpose has changed, this you know new thing has pulled us closer together. I feel that whatever it is, it should probably be tied again to the job mm -hmm. and how that has changed. I mean, it, it's simple, but we could always just look straight at the word we all just went to, which is guardian. You are my guardian? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, there is nothing wrong with, with keeping it simple. Yeah. Um, or, you know, guards. something something along those lines. Yeah, guard. Um, or we can even maybe. think of it like curator, docent. Like, you know, if we're thinking about, like, the Museum of Earth and we are guardians of the Museum of Earth, you know, you have security guards, you have docents, and you have curators and, like, the repair people, whatever. Um, wow. I took... <laughs> a lot of courses in museum studies and I'm failing myself <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, like preservationists, I guess. Um, Archaeologist. You're my archie. Oh, <laughs> like, shoot. I, 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 I like, I don't know, there's got to be something about guarding preservation. Mm -hmm. Is there another Being. word for guard? Oh, sure, I mean, then, like, you know, I, 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 one thing that jumps... Like, you're my uh, shield. Like, jumped to mind for me is that, like, you know, maybe, you know, one of us has, uh, uh, you know, been spending time collecting, like, old stories and things, and, uh, you know, the, you know, the idea of a defender or a guardian uh, has kind of become knight. Mm. Um, Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like knights. Uh, I like knights. Simple. I like knights. Yeah. Because, you know, then it also evokes ideas of like chivalry and if you kind of go down the sort of the courtly love uh, angle of knighthood and chivalry, then, you know, yeah. terms of endearment can be, you know, oh, my, 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 oh, knight. my sworn defender, my knight in shining mm -hmm. armor kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I think that's really sweet. Again, in the bottom of the. Uh... But on the card it does say a tender moment shared in secret, which is very nice. <laughs> um, My knight in shining armor, <laughs> you fixed me. <laughs> Maybe like, because one thing we haven't really done is form like shortened versions or like acronyms, and I feel that like as robotic types, we probably be, be inclined to do that. So like, what if? Knight in shining armor becomes K I S A or like Kisa. Yeah, yeah Kisa. Oh, Kisa. Kisa. So cute oh, too. I like that. It's so adorable. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Oh my god, my Kisa. I really like that. Aww. <laughs> You're my Kisa. Oh my gosh. It, it's it's your decision, now, <laughs> Yeah, I like I, I like Kisa. All right. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's okay. so cute. Kisa it is. Um, and yeah, that'll go with job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jerb. Uh. Jerb. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Hmm. What'll be fun? What'll be fun for Kisa? You know, how about I don't know. Um Kuka and Whirls. Let's have you two okay. uh, right. play with this All one. Right. Okay. Kuka. Yes, Whirls. My... It broke. My it broke. My, my uh my spinny broke. Can you can you broke? make it better and pretty? <laughs> of course. Don't uh, don't fret. Don't be full of buffer and rust. We'll take a quick look at that. We'll make sure that's all fixed. Goodness knows, uh, in the upcoming times here for the pie ahead, we're going to definitely need to be as strong as possible, and that includes in spirit. So I Ugh. am here to help you. Thank you. Of course. I, it makes I it look like I have a broken tooth. <laughs> I know that you and I don't always feel as strongly, considering that I uh, don't seem to collect a lot of kitchenware, but I really do respect your spirit, and I'm excited and terrified for the future, but I'm glad that at the very least that when things are 
a little bit overwhelming that you can come to me. Ah, uh, yes, of course. One second. And I open up. Spark for you, my Kisa. Thank you for fixing me. You are a very, very dear Kisa, and now you need to collect more sparks. Become one with the kitchen I and the god of spark. This spork, very gladly. You should put it around your neck. I'll put it in my bottle. <laughs> good, good, good. It pleases my Kisa. It pleases me very much. Thank you, good Kisa. With this spork. <laughs> With this spork. I, the spork I now might be <laughs> as a Kisa of Will you keep the each spork. other through all the pie. <laughs> All <laughs> Even until brick. <laughs> until and until 404. 404 do you part. Until 404. Until May you stay, you Kisa. <laughs> do not betray your Kisa. I'm so glad that we were able to hang out with you guys for a couple of hours and just invent wedding vows. So. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's making it so much easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Who's next? Um, I have a like ugh, an itchy one. Um, <laughs> itchy. Yeah, traitor. Oh. Ooh. An <laughs> act of utter selfishness stuns us all. What do we call the act or the people who commit it? Um, and. I had two two thoughts at the exact same time, <laughs> um, which was to change the word glitch into this term, so like a glitcher. Mm. Um, but in a way, like we would use that anyway, like, oh, he's such a glitcher. Um, but the other one was I was thinking like malware. Yeah. And like the corruption that malware and like you know Trojan um, viruses and stuff. I like, was just thinking Trojan. Yeah. Trojan. Yeah. So I was thinking virus it like a, a compound word or something with this one. I don't know. Ooh, you know, and I said I do like kind of going somewhere like with Trojan since we've been apparently reading literature lately. Apparently. Uh, been reading <laughs> apparently a few of us in our desperate times have been looking to literature, I guess, or thinking about the literature we have consumed. So maybe something with Trojan. It's a thought. What if we came across the story of the Trojan horse? Uh-huh. But okay. we, misinter we misinterpret it slightly. And we see kind of like the like the antagonist or the villain or like the representation of treachery, not as the Trojans hidden in the horse, but the horse. <laughs> <laughs> the horse itself. Horse in there. It's like very literal. <laughs> yeah. They put a horse. Well, it's actually, you know, in a weird way. They went into a horse. Goes, it goes back to the idea of we're being invaded right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's exactly where I was thinking. Is yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. So the horse is an invasive. In, the horse is an invasive thing. Yeah. Horses. Uh, I mean, just horse is fine too. Yeah. Like, we don't have to complicate it, I suppose. Um, hmm. Worse. Equine. Echo. Sal uh, Mustang. Colt. Mustang. Mare. Palomino. I mean, <laughs> as as all these words are ion. I think horse. horse. Yeah. 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 yeah, so You're let's horse. keep it simple. <laughs> uh, and, and call this one horse. And I, th ooh, I think this one would probably fall under the shadow of humanity. Um, it almost falls under our job, but like the just the idea of having a traitor is very human. human. <laughs> and I think that we probably assign that to if we're assigning it to the shadow of humanity, then maybe it's to people who don't see our work as as important as it is. 
Mm -hmm. and that we we would it, this would be an insult um it would also probably be a word that we apply to the foreign tech for sure yeah, yeah. oh yeah it's a horse it is that has come into our because the because it's made land. of creanesis just like us it's maybe different kind it maybe mm -hmm. it made some been made somewhere else but it's creanesis just like us but we were also never us. we were never made aware that it was coming like no. our creators care about us they care about the job that we do so they probably would have sent word that hey this is coming if it was from them <laughs> but, it's not. Maybe, but we, we don't that. know we don't, we don't know. know yeah and is so is an act of treachery uh or traitorousness um horsing around <laughs> part of me thinks it might have to be <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and i think for this one i i want to see crutch and beak okay okay yeah, yeah. i'll throw <clears throat> this down all right Beep. Uh, come on, come here, come here. You've, uh, I need you. I need you to keep your eyes open for uh, something that's not part of our, our plan. You remember you saw that flashing light in the sky a couple weeks ago? I saw it. It made me all buffer and rust, just like everyone else. I know, I know. Me too. I can't shake that rust. I can't shake that buffer from my mind at all. I think... I think it's a horse. I think it's a horse sent... to betray our work. At some point in Pi, we will have to confront this horse. And maybe... Prove ourselves. Prove why we are the Kisa of this planet. Rust, I mean, a crutch, you're, you're, I mean, just the fact that you're talking about us changing our purpose so completely at any point in Pi, I mean, somebody could say that that's being a horse in and of itself. Uh, but they would want you to think that. Stay true to your mission. Stay true to your, to your creanesis. But if you start talking about this kind of thing, people are just going to buffer and rust over it. I mean, you know, they'll 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 they'll, they'll buffer about thinking about getting bricked. We need to stay here. I say we wait, wait for it to come to us. But nevertheless, something of this world is not to be trusted. It is not a Creanesis, therefore it is horse. I mean, I've, I've always, you know, seen you as like a real, a real key set to a lot of people here, so I, 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 I guess I trust you. And, and also, uh, Crouch, please, please, please don't tell anybody I said glitch. No, no, no. <laughs> you're, say, you're, you're, I am Kisa, you are Kisa. Your secret is safe with me. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Can I just say how quickly we corrupted the mind of <laughs> <laughs> with curse words? I know. I'm sorry. I mean, essence comes with vulnerability. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, based on that, I think I've got one. Okay. Right. I am going to ask us to consider, because potentially this line of thinking might lead to uh, differing uh, thoughts or schools of thought within our, within our community. What do we call a faction? Oh! oh. <laughs> now... And this is because I know there are other museums, other other areas where they're curating. So uh, this doesn't apply to just our. Would this apply to different groups within 
our same isolation then? Well, I mean, the card specifies a group emerges within the isolation. Right. With strong opinions on how things need to change. Yikes, source. Okay. So specifically, it's not asking what do we refer to instead of the word faction. It's what is the name of the faction. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're probably, I mean, it, obviously, James, this is your card, but I think we're I think these are probably the people who think we need to fight, or be prepared to fight. Versus the people who <laughs> don't. Versus the people that want to welcome. Or uh -huh. the people who just aren't prepared to evolve that way. I mean, we weren't originally programmed to fight off people invading Earth. Like, I don't think that the humans who made us thought that we were going to develop anything near this level of society. We were just supposed to be teetering along. Uh, I don't think they thought that anything like this was going to happen at all. So I, I think there are people who think that, you know, if people come and take our stuff, we'll just keep starting again or something like that. But maybe there's people who think we actively need to fight. Mm -hmm. um, along those lines, I just came up with something. What about the the um, robots that were made of sharp objects, like the sharps, like they they have knives, they have cleavers, mm. they have whatever, they have axes, so they're the ones that are like, rototillers, yeah, so they have all the things that they, that like for them, it's like obvious, yes, I can go attack this thing because I have the ability to, whereas everybody else is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we could also talk about them as like, instillers of violence they could be like breakers yeah yeah well, I was, I'm, breakers. Quite, I'm wondering how how seriously do we take their separation are they an annoyance right. are they a threat you know well it doesn't necessarily imply that they separate from the group that just it's just that it's with, a different within different the group different. there is a disagreement I, I don't think that it's a disagreement that's so hard that it's going to completely like tear the group apart. I think it's just a difference of opinion about how to handle it. Like perhaps uh, there are those who feel very strongly that no, we stick to our mission. If possible, we kind of, you know, cooperate and live uh, peaceably uh, alongside yeah. these things. And then there are others who are like, no, these things aren't a direct threat to our purpose. They need to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Trashers. Like, I yeah, I, I, I do like the idea of like sharps or brickers. The idea of like, yeah, turning mm -hmm. one of our earlier words and, uh, you know, making it take on slightly different meaning. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of bricker because what bunker. everyone has just described is very much like we're gonna attack, and that's a very physical thing. Um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, yeah. I like yeah. Okay. I like Bricker as well. Can, can we do that? Take a previous word and... Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I mean, yeah, the, 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 there's nothing to say that we can't, you know, play off of words we've already come up with. It's not like we're getting rid of Bricked. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think I like that. Anybody have any other suggestions, or should we go with that? I'll take I it. Like it. Yes. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Um, a disagreement made public. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that this is probably going to be linked to our job again. Because again, it's like a disagreement over what our purpose is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm just popping their name there and for this uh disagreement made public um definitely didn't type the correct word there <laughs> um, uh, for this disagreement made public i think i want um worlds are zealot um and husk our healer. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, worlds, worlds. I'm, I'm all buffering, buffering, rusting about this new visitor of ours. But I don't know. I'm just gonna gonna stick to what I'm doing. 
I'm gonna stick to healing and fixing y'all up. What if this new visitor just, just goes and bricks everybody? What about well, that? You can't you can't heal everyone. I can try. I'm gonna do my best, but I ain't a bricker. I'm not gonna go out and brick somebody on purpose. Oh, I, I don't I'm not think it's right. I don't think it's right either, but we got to do something about him. We got to protect our protect our museum. It's all yeah. there is. There is that, but what what is broken can be fixed again. You know, that's what I, we've been doing for hundreds of years. Well, but what if they, he breaks all of us? What if, well, what if we're what's broken? Can, can we all... ends for us. We what can't can just sit around and let 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 one new new thing give us all pie and and make it just end and nothingness. What do you propose that we do? Can we can we I, I'm not saying brick him. I'm not a bricker. I, I'm not saying brick him. Do you, I have nothing to brick with. I I have a spatula. I you have some it, knives. It, I've seen them. <laughs> oh, I mean, I do have a nice set of, of chef's knives. They're very pretty, very shiny. I had, you should go see in my section of the museum. I love these knives. They have this like, right, bricker. Um, I, I think that we should figure out a way to transport him. That's it. We, we transport it to a isolated pot spot and we leave it there and hope it never comes back. You're talking about bricking it. No. By neglect. No, no, no. <laughs> no. We can't we we don't we don't go to pie by neglect. There is no there's no end of pie by neglect. I mean <laughs> we found jumbles just the other day. <laughs> he didn't come back for repair, and now he's bricked. He 404'd and bricked. <laughs> Gonna oh. bring him back. Jumbles. Bless your Zero one heart. Yeah, I mean, but what you're proposing it was a true sounds kiss like up. you're bricking him. So Ugh, I don't, I don't want to brick him. I just want to protect our job. Our job Lock is everything. Glitch, you don't. <laughs> well, you're thinking about glitching this guy up. I am not going to glitch just... him out there. What do you propose then? What if he comes in here and destroys everything? What if he bricks you? You We're are the only about thing we have left. This is Creonesis, just just like you and I. It's just a little different. So we reason with it. We try to figure it out. I haven't met a system that I can't figure out yet. So you say, instead of leaving him out there, we, well, we send you. I, <laughs> you see these little dust bins on the bottom of my feet? Well... It'll take me 10 years to get out there. Oh, no. We have transport. We put you on transport, and we send you. You talk to him. Oh, if sure. you think you can solve it, you talk. Gonna wander off and mutter, oh, she's a glitching bricker. <laughs> Moment of silence, please, for Jumbles. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jumbles. <laughs> or else with mortar oil for Jumbles. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, that's great, guys. Well done. Oh my gosh. All right, well, that's me. Um, I have one. Cool. Uh, which I'm, I'm very, I'm very intrigued. See what you guys are gonna do with this. Intriguid. <laughs> oh yes. That's awesome. <laughs> We're in so. after hours now, right? <laughs> <laughs> after hours they appear. Yeah. <laughs> to dialect. A game about language. And now it dies. Um so Yeah, what what do we do? to deal with the buffer and rust that we that's probably not good for us. 
What is I it mean... called and what are the consequences? Yeah. yeah. What is it? You know, I always think that I'm immediately thinking of that episode of Futurama where Bender gets hooked on electricity. Yeah, that's oh, what right. I was just thinking. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like getting hooked I mean... on like electricity or motor oil or something. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's something like you download an iOS or something, like an operate, not an iOS, an, just an OS. An operating system. An operating yeah. system we're not, that like. You're not running on Apple. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, it's maybe a little bit malware, maybe not. <laughs> like... It's a little spicy. <laughs> maybe, maybe it is something where you start to temporarily alter your code. Yeah. Oh. I, I think if we if we talk about permanent alters to our code, I think we're going to start. Like you're a hacker? Like upgrades or. Yeah, yeah. I think well... that's probably like. Probably not. I think that's something we may not be able to really do, but maybe something that like temporarily stops some of our directives. I kind of think about like magnets and how they interfere with electrical. Oh yeah, signals. that's cool. You and know, you, like, like put like, magnet on us that just kind of like screws us like, up for a second. Like we're high. I I like that <laughs> idea, and it's almost like it's accidentally discovered one day. Like someone's oh, yeah. rooting through a pile of junk and they find a magnet, and they're like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I like I that shot. It's yeah, it's widely looked down upon because it absolutely decreases your productivity, and over time, it makes it means that it might start to mess with some of your functions. So I mean, it can erase your information on a card, like yeah, a credit so card. Stuff, you know? Yeah, it may make you four or four too early. I was just thinking, like, I like the the idea that there's dual strength, where like something can mess with your com your components, but something can mess with your physical. Uh, like, there's a magnet out there so powerful that like I can't move um and like but yeah. some but like some nefarious machines out there might want to seek out that little thrill of like oh i'm stuck in one place so i can't move, I yeah. can't move. Yeah. <laughs> or the idea of like if your body magnetizes you start picking up things that you don't mean to pick up <laughs> which is kind of you funny know? which would yeah be total make you totally useless and it would mean that uh you'd have to be repaired and especially right now considering that there's a threat to our Grianesis and our, our continued ability to repair ourselves, then I would say, yeah, mag I like magnets. Yeah, I, I really like magnets. Magnets. Like magnets. And the consequences are that, like, it kind of messes with your, you know, your, you know, quote unquote yeah. head. Um, but over time, the effects become cumulative. You start to degrade mentally and physically. Yeah. Um, I like, yeah. like the idea of, like, you know, you might just start out with one of those little disc magnets, but before long, you're seeking out like the kind of the, the cartoon <laughs> ones. And beyond that, you know, just the the ones the you giant get at, lifters. Uh, at junkyards are all are all, are <laughs> yeah. all you're gonna need. <laughs> so many bombs have been bricked by those. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also yeah, think about like know. the street name of this, like, and I think about like polarity. Polars. Polars. You gotta get your polars on. <laughs> hey man, come buy some polars. I, I, I was thinking of just like shortening magnets to like nets. Like, like, hey Bags. man, you've been netting, but I do like polars as well. Have you been polarizing? Um, yeah. Have you been polarizing? I think that, I think you, that you could probably use that, that more officially it's magnets, but mm -hmm. more, more like the slang. For them. This, yeah. The, what about, the, what uh, about combo pole nets? Like polar magnets? Yeah. I, I yeah. think we can just go polars. I like yeah, polars. polars. Polars like runs off the tongue. Well, and we can ha again have two words for it: magnets or polars, depending yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, polars is more a term you use. It, it developed as a word that you used when you didn't want to say magnets, but then it's now just a word, another word for magnets. South Pole and North Pole. Yeah. <laughs> I get yeah. your poles on. And I think that, ooh, you know, honestly, I think this is relates to repair because it makes repair such a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It makes okay. repairing you harder. And very much in that same way that a lot of human vices make our bodies harder to repair, I think that this, yeah, and it's one of those things where culturally, like, there's that sense of, like, were you using magnets, though? And it's totally... <laughs> Ridiculous, but I think it, I think that's what. <laughs> well, <laughs> and it, it it goes directly against like the idea of self sufficiency and your repair. Like you're purposely mm -hmm. hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 
argue for it, and just play devil's advocate, could I argue for it being uh, linked to the shadow of humanity? Because, I was of also course, debating on that. Part, part of the reason that people are seeking this out is because of their buffer and rust over the situation that we're facing, which itself is tied to the fact that we have mm -hmm. a sense of attachment. That's very fair, and the thing is that, like, this is kind of a human thing to do. All right, I'm sold. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun to see how these can land in various categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not ever just one thing. Yeah. 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 You can put it like on the left side of the shadows of humanity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like I mean, in between the two. Yeah, you like, absolutely can do that. Yeah. So the Venn diagram oh, overlaps. All right. Yeah. And for this conversation, I Sweet think relief. that uh, I think we should have Beep and Husk. Oh god. <laughs> Please give me my after school special. I was gonna say, do you want me to do a dare program? <laughs> hey, uh, this is entertainment. This is, yeah, this is Are you in here? I wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, oh, hey, Beep. Uh, come, on, come on in. I'm just uh, over here fiddling around, you know. What's going on? Well, I was talking to some of the others about whether, you know, how some of the ones that are calling themselves brickers are arguing that we need to, you know, to deal with all this buffer and rust, we should just solve the problem and go and like really you know glitch up the 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 weird visitor we found and you know i i, I just wanted to know what you think yeah well uh um <clears throat> now beep uh might not want to use that word i'm so sorry that i glitched up then um oh, i did it again um yeah i'm i don't really believe to in going out and breaking things. You know, I just try to fix and fix and fix. I'm all about the self-preservation of ourselves and our bodies. And I think it's really important and anything that you do to do that, get away from that, just, it ain't right. It ain't, you know? I, I don't know if you've ever uh, heard of Polars. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. I was. I was. A oh, glitch, huh? I, I I I was talking to Scrambles the other day, and he he asked me if I wanted to try magnets. <laughs> no. Um, those are very dangerous. I have no experience with them whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> but I've seen, I have seen it really mess with the code. I mean, it's done things that I can't fix. There, there's, there's only so much source code out here, and once you start mixing stuff up there and start glitching things up, so to speak, that'll brick you, you know, or 404 you, and there is a point where I can't bring people back. You know, it's, polars are dangerous, speak. I, I heard it really messes up your creenesis and, you know, you kind of lose part of what makes you you. Yeah, I mean, there is a, again, <laughs> no personal experience with this, but there there's five years that I, I just glitched out. I don't remember repairing half of these folks around here, you know, but I, I will say... <laughs> Man, I was not buffering. I was not Steve, buffering at all. You, you used to do polars. I mean, shoot. Um, no, no, no. Uh, it's just something that my. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah. My Kisa and I, uh, we would sometimes do polars, but we got rid of it. We got we got rid of the magnets. Um, you know, it was it was messing us up too much. So, you stay out of those. 
I will, Huss. Don't worry. You can trust me. All right. I want you to see Pi all the way to the end. Me too. When, all right. when if Scramble asks me again if I want magnets, I'll just say, no, I want pie. Yes, and you call Scrambles a glitching horse, okay? And you tell him, you, you send him to Husk, and he will get, uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Don't tell anybody that I said glitch in front of you so much. Okay, Husk, I won't. I have made excellent decisions. <laughs> that was perfect. Do you? <laughs> Did you hold out the magnet like this? <laughs> the, uh, the only thing that, that's missing is like one of us turns to another, like at some point, and just uh -huh. like, hey. Creanesis, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you just, at some point, you see uh, Husk's, one of his infrared sensors, just flicker a little bit when he's <laughs> talking about it. Uh. Nice. <laughs> Magnets, not even once. <laughs> <laughs> Magnet, how do they work? <laughs> <laughs> Insane clown posse was just a drug PSA all along. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, yes. oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you for putting up with this audience. <laughs> Glad you're here for our, uh, our nail jokes. Um... All right. Um, I think we've just got one left. Yeah, Carrie. Okay, um, I have something here that I am not entirely sure how to do. Ooh. It's an action. Oh, right. Yes, this is a different kind of card. I have an action card. So just because I haven't played one and no one has, I'm going to do that. And I also yeah, do don't it. like my word card because it's boring. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So, play an aspect in the current age and choose a word from a previous age. So, the only one in the current age is uh, the Guardians of the Museum of Earth. Um, let me choose a word from the previous age uh, and then move that word to the new aspect and explain how the word has changed meaning because of this aspect. So the word remains the same, but its meaning changes. Mm. Ooh. We have oh. pi or creanesis. Okay. Creanesis. I mean, they Cre I think, probably change. I was like, I think creanesis, oh, I don't move things. You move things. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you would um, like me to move creanesis, I will. Uh, I think it's Creanesis that's changed. Okay. Um, I'm going to explain how it's changed. I think it's changed because now there is our technology, what we've created, what we have found, what we're made of, and then this foreign one. And so now I think Creanesis has evolved to mean just our technology locally. And we've created a new word to to mean other technology or other things that we don't quite understand. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That Creanesis is now a division a of, of us. Creanesis refers to us as a people. Yeah, yeah. it refers to us Ooh, as a people. That's We're so the Creanites. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's straightforward and mm -hmm. the wraps up the tension, which I like. Oh, uh, the Korean Knights, yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's so, an so, obvious, like, evolvement. So, so, so the word itself, Creanesis, stays the same. It's meaning okay. changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so then so, we are Creanesis. That is not. Yeah, yeah. so it yeah. is now evolved to mean just us and our things and the things originating on Earth and no longer means anything else. This game Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this game. Okay. 
Uh, and then a bad idea from the start is the thing on it. Um, interesting. Um, okay. I think I want, uh, Crutch and Husk. Hmm. Have an accent off. <laughs> uh, she... <clears throat> Uh, Husk, I've got a, uh, I've got a little problem with my, uh, with my vending claws. Um, can you get, can you just, um, uh, squish on up and just, uh, give me a little tinker. Give me a little, uh, just give me a little oil up there. And I think I might be able to get back out on the, on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, how did, how did this happen? Oh, I was out, uh, you know, Scrounging, you know, clawing, uh -huh. grabbing, and, uh, you know, just got a little too ambitious, you know, slung out my, cl slung out my claw a little further than I, you know, than my, 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 my distance gauge, you know, yeah, it looks been, like it <laughs> been a little faulty out there as well. But, uh, it really makes me wonder, like, you know, how can I push my limits? How can I, you know, how can I expand my possibilities? Yeah. I mean, that, that's. That's an interesting thought. I know Beep, Beep was asking me a little bit about expanding possibilities there for a little bit. <clears throat> um, now, uh, you're you're not talking about like like really changing your core self, right? Like, I don't I don't want you to become a horse. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I ain't a bricker. I ain't a horse. I ain't, I ain't a horse. Nah, I'm just talking about like doing my job as best I can. And okay. I just want, you know, like, like I want to be the best that I can. Like, I really want to show that I'm Kisa, you know, that I am, you know, worthy of that word, Kisa. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, all right. I mean, that makes sense. As long as you don't change your fundamental pre No, I, I think, mean, I think, I, again, I, I worry about that. I mean, I think the presence of that horse, that, you know, that, that, dropped in here just yeah, shows been buffering that for weeks it just shows how you know how our cause and our you know our mission is so important yeah i mean <laughs> that thing ain't from around here i will say that <laughs> it is not us <laughs> oh i've traveled all the way across this country to try and you know complete this mission i grew you know i, I was born you know well, on the other side of that and i just can see all the differences kind yeah of cre kind of just creeps its head up and like barely peeks over a ridge and i get this little signal in in, in my brain of like it's trying to talk to me and i think well geez maybe you know maybe it's the one that's giving out these polars to people you know i mean <laughs> the polars i found were not from that guy but uh, uh shoot <laughs> i glitched up on that one uh no you know it's i think it's something different i don't know i went out that way i didn't get too close because i didn't feel safe i just i was you know <laughs> i don't want to brick I'm, no, don't, I'm, don't buffer it's i'm I, don't you buffer okay just any any things i do or if kuka makes some changes to you just make sure that you are still Creenesis, that you are part of our team here. I don't, I don't want you changing too much. You know, we love you just the way that you are, Crutch. Um, all right, okay. that looks. You look like you're all ship shape now. Oh, feel good. Feel good. Great. Great. Ready to roll. Yeah. Stay away from that horse. <laughs> Glitch horse. Glitch that horse. Uh, Glitch that horse straight to Glitch. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, really quick, just for my uh, my fancy notebook, what uh, what uh, does which aspect is Creensis attached to now? Uh, it's uh, still attached to museum or uh, guardians. Oh. oh, it's attached to the new one. Got it. Yeah, it's yeah. attached to guardians. Got it. Uh, that brings us to the end of uh, age two. 
Uh, I've just dealt you your single age three card. Uh, so okay. maybe once I've introduced age three, take a look at those and decide which of the three you currently have you want to discard. So entering into age three, what was foreshadowed has come to pass. The end of the isolation is near. There is no escaping it. More of them. They fell from the sky one by one before they outnumbered us. Interfacing is still clunky, but it's unquestionable at this point. Our missions are fundamentally incompatible, and now they are making it impossible for us to satisfy our programming. What drastic action must we undertake? Crud. I mean... I'm thinking that, you know, the logic of the Brickers becomes ever more undeniable and we take action so drastic that we start turning our, you know, items that we've been curating and collecting and taking care of into, like, weapons and defenses. Wow. That it's you know because it's clear that we will not be able to continue our mission with these things around and so we if it, if we must temporarily abandon that mission in order to destroy this threat so be it yeah that's what i i think will happen and we may turn our museum into a temporary like fortress stronghold so those that are weaker can be protected inside while those that are stronger can be out there fighting the threat yeah then our things stay protected within its walls yeah well and i imagine that all of our jobs change a little bit because we're no longer on the search for anything we're solely now protecting what we've mm -hmm. got and doing it at all costs like yeah. the brickers yeah like you said james like the brickers their argument has won based on everything that's happening and we have to take this action. Yeah, because if if our if our very nature is under threat, I mean there's Yeah, it, it's in our base coding. We 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 cannot rewrite our base coding or no otherwise we're no longer pre Enesis anymore. So mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if there is, this is kind of maybe just a little too philosophical, but is there a way that we would be able to determine who's used magnets and then determine that they should be on the front lines? I, I <laughs> That's know. a very philosophical discussion. Oh boy. I feel like, I feel, I, was like probably, I, I feel like we wouldn't want to do that, probably primarily because those people wouldn't be able to fight very well. Yeah, I was thinking the ones that were originally created with, as yeah. we've said before, like crop dusters or like with blades, like anything that was yeah. created in a way that could be transformed into a fighter very easily. I think that would be what goes out on the front lines. Okay. Here's the other thing I do think. I think we probably collect the things that are dangerous. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, Humanity definitely. Just, like, I have a lot of knives. Skirts all of the things that it left i don't think it kept all of its weapons behind I'm, i think that they definitely have some dangerous stuff i have an army I'm reminded, of brick <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm reminded of that viral video uh where like there's like a garden party and there's a kid running by the trampoline and one of the adults goes what have you got there and he goes a knife <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, little beef, they internet. grow up so fast. <laughs> you haven't seen Spoons that video, no kids. more. <laughs> they are oh, now no knives. more sporks. Now we collect knives. Oh, yeah. I think I think that's honestly what my my collection would change from sporks to. I would be collecting all the knives and things in order to bring them to husk or mm -hmm. and coca to transform creatures into fighting machines yeah to fight for our which stuff. i know is 
my god we are becoming battle right. bots. yeah same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. right in the very first meeting originally we were like so are we battle bots and then we were like no we're not battle bots and we're here we are once again yeah. we're, we're, we're battle what? bots now uh yeah. we're battle bots who create we a just keep rotating right back around to one idea and it's battle bots you guys <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do think it's probably hard on most of us because I know yeah. I, I I know I was definitely not a bricker. Um, Same. Yeah. And that this is very incompatible to my nature, but I also know that you can't survive yourself and be the masterpiece and see pie tomorrow if you let these all these horses come in and steal our our things. So yeah, I just okay. know for me. Our, our job is of the utmost importance and anything that that impedes it must go. Mm -hmm. And these impede it. So I may not like the idea of bricking something else, but I like the idea of us not completing our job less. So yeah. then the question is, which of the aspects comes with us into age three? And Only one of them change? comes in? <laughs> it says oh, the job. It, it the human job. The job, job evolves? Or, or humanity? Well, I'm also wondering, Ooh. though, if the, oh, no, the repair... The evolved. Yeah, repair. Oh, yeah, you're right, repair. Because it's, it's we're repair changing. Anymore. It's not just repair. It's it's not, like, in addition to repair, it's also arm. Like, we need to That's arm great. ourselves. You're retrofitting. Yeah. Yeah, we're not just designed for crawling through... Innovating. Anymore. Yeah, I yeah, think that's to... actually really fair. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how do we how do we call this now? Weaponizing. Yes. I mean, essentially, yeah. <laughs> I call All right. arms. We're doing a hardware upgrade, essentially. <laughs> yeah. But Upgrading. That we're weaponizing our our battle bots. So. <laughs> battle bots. Uh, I want to be one of those ones with that's just a big slot. That's it. I was gonna say, I'm just you, you just have a knife now in every one of your arms, and you're just like speeding through waving knives. I'm gonna, I'm gonna affix a giant knife. like uh, a giant um, like ice pick to my head, so I can just <laughs> head headbutt somebody. Oh boy! <laughs> hey, that's a that is a that is a tried true battle bot. Oh yeah, just, just you're, you're, knife and just hit things. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, go I'm just screwing around collecting yeah. everything so other people can become can so become we weapons. This yeah. card a card, right? Oh. Which I think us with one card each. Uh, no, you should still have two because you started with three. I only have two. Yeah, I have two right now. So yeah, we yeah I have two because we play one, discard one each round. So. So we have yeah. to discard one. Oh, it doesn't matter because we only play one anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I've got what I'm going to do. I, hmm. uh, I do as well. And incidentally, Beep has uh, exchanged his wicker baskets for saucepan lids. And <laughs> they can sort of... You have become one with the kitchen god. They, oh, they, 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 they can kind of part slightly, uh, under which is uh, a can of deodorant and a lighter. <laughs> I'm into it. I've, oh I've essentially God. got like tasers also at one end of my thing because while I might repair people, I also need to be defensive. So, yeah, I'm sure I have a very elegant solution of some kind as well. Mm -hmm. I have butcher knives, I have now attached butcher knives to my arms. Oh, 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 uh, poison. Something that poisons electricity, like acid. Ooh, yes, okay, because like an octopus, I was, yeah. the octopus is like, yeah. my, 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 uh, oh, I inked. my inspiration, <laughs> so I think I, I have like acid. I also Ooh, think, acidic cephalopod, you. I also think Crutch <laughs> upgraded all of his retractable claws to be full winches, so he can literally like grapple hook to nice. like a building and then like nice. haul himself. <laughs> All right. Cool. Anybody want to go first? Yeah, do we want to... I don't know if we still want to do an intermission? Short break. Or... Um, 
I'm yeah, good actually, to go. I, think, I, I mean, I think now is as good a time as any. Um, mm -hmm. We will uh, take a short five-minute break just to give our players a uh, an opportunity to get up, grab some water, stretch their legs, etc. Uh, and before we do, uh, Emmy, if you'd like to give our shout-out for our charity of the month that we're supporting. That's right. Uh, every month we do a charity shout out here at the Adventures Deck, and for the month of September, it is the Ocean Cleanup Project. Please go check out the link down below in our widgets. They're doing some amazing and important work cleaning up our waterways of uh, very nasty plastics and pollutions. It's a really, uh, obviously, life saving work right now, so uh, check them out. Yeah. Um... Yeah, as I say, every month uh, we have a different charity. This month is the Ocean Cleanup Project, doing uh, incredibly valuable and important work. So please do give them a look during the intermission. And we will be right back.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, if you've just joined us, we here at the Adventures Pack are playing Dialect, a game about language and how it dies. We are the erstwhile curators of the Museum of Earth, a group of robots patched together from various bits of technology and random items. Recently, as we have entered our third and final age of play, we have become guardians and if even warriors as we prepare to defend our mission against a mysterious alien intrusion. So, who would like to play the first card for H3? Well, do you want to go, Carrie? Um, sure. I have another action card. Ooh, okay. yeah, why not? Do it. Okay. Well, that's not how you drag things. I know how to drag folks. There you go. <sighs> what we bring in. They start as whispers, but they grow. Voices that aren't our own gain prominence in the community. Um, it says I pick a previously defined word, explain why a foreign word for this concept has infiltrated our language. Ah, it's our, it's our first build a word. This mm. is a mechanic of the game where we don't, you know, discuss and come up with, uh, you know, different uh, phrases or uh, contractions or acronyms. Uh, we actually use a mechanic in dialect that actually helps you build brand new words from scratch, uh, which you should be able to view in the Roll20 extension, Terry. Uh, yes, I just had that open. Create um, a word. Boop. Oh, except I want to actually see what the card says first. Um, so yeah, so it's a foreign word for the concept has infiltrated our language. So first off, I pick which word. And I think the word that has infiltrated and has changed it is um, for this concept has infiltrated our language. I think it will be um, bricked. Uh, I had a feeling it was going to be bricked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to be bricked has changed because they don't brick, they do something else. And mm. um hmm. okay and, so and like in our interfacing with them their word for it has kind of come yeah, to a like, place. Like we hear since we have now become battle bots, we, we <laughs> have heard we have heard their last word and every time that they one of them bricks and as we say it, they say something else, and that's the word wow. that slowly becomes brick. Cool. That's cool. Whatever their last word is. Now let's see if I can figure out. So I, I make the word, or we all make it together. You make the word. I'm pretty sure. You make it. Ooh, yeah. I get to make a word. Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Fancy. This yeah, is really. Day shape here. I mean, like, um, I feel like this is like time. Gonna take me a second. Yeah. Well, I mean. It this is one of the most interesting aspects of the game, for me anyway. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, dialect was actually designed by a group of linguists. So everything that you are seeing here in terms of how words might change, how uh, new words come to be, the kind of prefixes and suffixes the carriers currently in the middle of putting together to create a new, new <laughs> word for death, um, all actually have their roots in well-established linguistics, uh, which I, as an enormous geek, absolutely love. Yeah. Uh, you want to bring yeah. up the chart so um, the audience can see yeah, that's what true. that kind of looks do. like? Rather than being a behind-the-scenes kind of deal, give me a moment, I will do that. So, um, for the creating of the word, this is what Carrie's currently working from. Um, so you pick a root of the word, and then you essentially, based on that, add uh, or, uh, well, add to the end or the beginning uh, a different sound, essentially, and that gives you your word. There are um, uh, much more advanced rules for doing this, but given that uh, the most experienced person playing this game is me, and this is only my <laughs> third time playing, I'm going to stick to the simple one. I, I like the simple. All right. I... I think, yeah, I think I got it. All right, okay. let's see if I can pronounce this now. <laughs> um, and is it okay if I pick 
from any of the inventory or do I have to pick from the specific one that I did? Does that make sense? I, I, I think the way it's meant to work is that if you start with a basic, then you go with basic. If you go with advanced, you choose advanced, okay. etc. So basic root, basic ethics. Got it. Okay. So I am doing average and it's Scriak. Scriak. Ooh. <laughs> well, I don't like that at all. No, <laughs> that, that, that makes me feel ishy. <laughs> I know. Can you spell that? Uh, S-K-R-E-A-K. S-K-R-E-A-K. Scriak. Scriak. Yes. When someone is now bricked, is now they are Scriak'd. I think that's a very important concept for us, especially since it's implying a very different kind of death, because this is a, a more probably more violent death. Than what more acute. Do. It's intentional yeah. death rather yeah. than brick, unintentional. You just mm -hmm. kind of fall apart over time. Yeah. Uh, this is. This is sudden. This is traumatic. This is. Yeah, unexpected. traumatic death. I like that traumatic death is Scriak. Like intentional we we were purposely causing this death on them and when they do it to us it's on purpose and not something that happens because we can't save anymore. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. It's getting increasingly dark and then <laughs> <laughs> Come on, a post apocalyptic robotic wasteland is getting dark? But, you know, <laughs> there's still some innocence left out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, who wants to be number two? I think we need to do the uh, role play. Oh, the conversation, of course. An yeah. Honest mistake. Uh, the main role outsiders. I. I mean, I don't think we talked to them once. May have outsiders. All right. I am going, if this is allowed, I am going to have, um, and I think Scott's listening, I'm going to have Beep um, and Kuka and an outsider bot, an alien bot, if we're allowed to have an alien bot. Um, uh, I mean, it says you may have outsiders. I mean, you could always say that you, you know, you want one of us to play the outsider. Yeah, I think that's probably what we're going to have to do. Okay, so I want. There. Okay, so wait, I want. Okay, I got this then. Um, we'll do Beep and Kuka, and I want Ben to play the outsider bot. Shit. Okay. <laughs> I mean, oh, glitch. Glitch. <laughs> oh, glitch. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so I guess maybe this is the uh, the last attempt to salvage peace before. Or maybe this is just a we found a downed one. Oh, maybe yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be watching this. Rich Kuka. See, I knew that was a bad idea to be teaching you that word. I don't think this one's going to see very much more pie. No, this one's... This one's near in the end, Be This one's... This one's going to... Full Screeock, I think. It's weird how... When they say it, and when we say it, it sounds so similar and yet so just so so glitched sounds much worse when they say it doesn't it? Scriak. Scriak. really makes you buffer I don't think that we should let this one buffer and rust anymore probably just let it scriak Kuka, 
is this the sort of thing that Kisa is supposed to do? You know... Aren't we doing the same sort of thing that we used to say people were horses for doing? In a way. Things do change, Beep. We have to change. Humans changed. We have evidence. Rooms and rooms and rooms of evidence that our makers changed. And if we as Prienesis want to survive, if we want our museum to survive into pie, then I think this is necessary. Painful. It causes me all kind of buffer and rust, but it is necessary. It's not what I, I was designed for. It doesn't make me comfortable or happy, and I don't see myself in this. What we have to do. It makes me feel like I've used a load of magnets, even though I've never touched them. Good. Good. We need you. We need you to keep being you, even just a little bit. Okay, Beep, don't change that much. All right. I'm gonna kind of tilt my alarm clock eyes down at my now heavily armored form. <laughs> I'll uh, go make sure that that horse is good and it's great cock and we'll head inside. Scriac, Scriac, I hate it. Still, I hate it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or does it? Um, well, well, that was right. creepy. That was, creep. <laughs> that was so creepy. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Wonderful death there, Ben. <laughs> a thing. Yeah. Solid die. <laughs> <laughs> the enemy goes to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> um, I've got one. Sure. Please. Okay. Given the kind of thing that that conversation was based on, uh, what has become taboo? Ooh. Ooh. Yes, right. mm -hmm. uh, what was previously a common word is now only uttered in hushed tones or euphemism. Make a connection. Play a previously defined word. Explain why this word is now taboo. Uh, and skip the build a word phase, and you explore the taboo. Um, Interesting. And hear me out on this, and I'm open to different ideas. Um, I think, given that our purpose, or like what we are actually doing with ourselves now, has become so radically different, it's almost as if the taboo has like flipped on a word almost that to say like now that we don't say brick for death we also don't refer to ourselves as brickers because that mm. held negative connotations before and it's almost as if we are socially trying to pretend <clears throat> socially trying to pretend that we didn't used to see that in such a negative light okay i'm okay I with that yeah that's fine by me or alternatively um like maybe you know the like the idea of the kisa um though i'm not quite sure how that might uh come through in the same way so yeah let's let's go with like bricking or brickers okay yeah yeah i'm down for that i like that i'm down okay. so the word doesn't really change um but yeah so in the conversation explore the taboo um the conversation is what was once common may involve outsiders um so if it's if this, this kind of conversation it probably wouldn't involve outsiders so i am gonna say let's have whirls and crutch Talk about this. Hi. 
<laughs> hey, Crutch. Ah, uh, I see you added some sharpies to your to your attire. Yeah, it's... I've uh, I wanted some long range attacks, so I uh, I had uh, Husk affix some uh, some harpoons to my. Uh, uh, my expandable claws there, so I can zip out, snag the enemy, bring them back, have a and have a you know, nice, nice bash. Uh, it's been quiet on this patrol for the past hour. Haven't yeah. seen much at night. Yeah, there. It's been quiet lately. I, I hope that means we're almost to the end of this. Whatever it is. But I have my knives. You want a knife? I have plenty. They are kitchen knives. They are very sharp. They used to cut through. I don't know what they cut through. But they were important. And they are still important. You want a knife? I'll never say no. I'll never say no to an author. <laughs> author like, like that. Okay. <sighs> I open up my microwave chest and there's like a whole stash of knives. <laughs> Knife for you. Another and claw. Spark. Just drops down his bungees a little bit before. It is good that this is. Well, I'm glad we are protecting what it was, but you know. I'll just be glad when those those breakers are gone. Just gone from everywhere. Can't say that. It's just, for so long, I just thought of them so, so different from us, but now I just can't, I see, yeah. I, I see now, I, I see the change. I see the change in, you know, in the shift, and I remember what it was like when Brickers were bad. Yeah, I remember what it was like. Just collecting sparks. It was a different time. It was peaceful. I like that. But back then, being a bricker was was not good. But now they rule everything. It is to them that we must recoilly look, so can't really Aren't we all brickers brickers now? I look back and pie extends behind me. Pie extends ahead of me. It's been endless forever. Who knows what pie will bring tomorrow. Pie is everything. I love the moments of like the kind of Zen <laughs> surfer. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, ugh. <laughs> a Zen surfer with a harpoon on. Uh... <laughs> Ito ergo sum, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, okay. Um, All right. Who's up next? I'll go. Do it. All right. This is also an action card. Label. Ooh. Okay. What are you wearing? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with this card, using this word has become a badge we wear. It is a point of pride or something we are trying to hide. Um, I believe that it's Kisa. Mm. Mm -hmm. We're more than just... Crianesis is what we are made of, and it is us, but we as a people are Kisa. Mm. We're friends. We're guardians. We're knights. I like it. Yeah, I, okay. I definitely like that. Um, moment of truth. All right. And as far as the conversation goes, I am thinking worlds and beats. Okay. Uh, well, 
Wells, I need to talk to you about something. Yes, Beep? Do you need to talk to me about the the land of Spork? The god of Spork? Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, that too. <laughs> um, m m maybe later, but, but like, oh. Uh, Oh, glitch worlds! Like you've got to see it. There's loads of them. They're coming over the, they're coming over the, over the ridge to the north. It's a real buffer and rust, man. Well, uh, show me, show me where it is. I had to come and get you. You're one of the bravest Kisa among us. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll definitely go now. Where, where, where do I need to go? I, I will fight for you, Beep. I, I am so honored to be. Called the Kisa. They're pouring over the ridge and they threaten every fiber of our Creonesis. Oh, glitch wells, I don't know if we're going to make pie out of this. Oh, with me by your side, we will definitely, maybe, hopefully, make pie. Oh, I, I have an extra knife, just in case. I'll, Let's do it. I'll, I'll take anything I can get at this point. <laughs> Just be careful. It's sharp. Don't hurt yourself. You were you were just an innocent little one. I don't want you to hurt yourself. But here you go. You you are also Kisa. You are a brave brave soldier and a brave little beep. If we make it out of this, do you think they'll tell stories of Wells the warrior and Beep the brave? Oh. I don't know if they'll tell stories of, of Worlds of Warrior, but Beep the Brave, yes. I think stories will be told of Beep the Brave. They'll be told far and wide. All will know your name. Hey. And me, just your companion. Well, that's, that, that, that's real nice of you, Wells. Uh, Say, uh, Wells? Yeah, yes, Beep. You, um... You haven't got any magnets on you, have you? <laughs> Beep! You've gone down the dark path and... Oh, no, Give I me haven't a second. touched it. I haven't I... touched it, but I thought this might be my last chance. Oh, yeah, of course I have magnets on me. I have some great fridge magnets. I keep a stash with me. <laughs> Just take the one, one of the fridge magnets. I'm like, I wonder what this place was. Flow Rider. <laughs> I don't know, but it must have been important. It's why I saved it. <laughs> Charges into battle. He, le he lets out the battle cry of, for Flowrider! Did you, did All right. you go over the trench you <laughs> Yes! <laughs> you broke me! You broke me! <laughs> <laughs> I have to play my card now. I have to, based on that. Oh, where is it? I'm like crying so hard. Uh, <laughs> it's what we pass on. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh no! The tale of Beep the Brave <laughs> and Whirls the Warrior. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's gonna be. Yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> children, newcomers, opportunities to pass on our language. Even now, we are compelled to do so. Uh, make a uh, make a connection. Play on a previously defined word. Explain how we uh, teach the word to those who don't yet know. <sighs> um, I think. <laughs> I think the word is is pie. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. knowable future. Whereas uh, now the future is probably quite knowable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> uh. 
<laughs> I think we all needed a, a second to breathe there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to transition out of that beautiful, glorious moment. Um, uh -huh. So I... Because at the start of their mission, Worlds and Beep did not know that they would be stout and formidable opponents. Um, and they did not know what awaited them as they crested that ridge into battle. But they charged forward <laughs> nevertheless. <laughs> um... They embraced their pie. Hmm. So I think that is what we pass on. So even though the idea of destiny is unknowable, it's taught through examples like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The and how you can pie. lead a good and you can lead a good life and a noble life and it doesn't mean like the end of the end of pi does not mean the end of you because your story lives on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. i like it all right um skip the build a word phrase in the conversation explore passing on the word All right. Uh, Kuka and Hutch. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> well, Kuka, here we are. This wasn't the way I envisioned completing myself. No. But... You're looking mighty glitching right now, Kuka. Thank you. You're a true key, so you know. <laughs> likewise. Likewise. I know we've always done similar things very, very differently. But in this moment, we've come very similar, you know? I Great think we team. have. You know? Embrace Our creanethis has become more concrete, more tied together, if you will. Embraced what this pie became. Yeah. We're here now. We're at it. We've we found that unknowable thing we always thought we weren't ever going to find here. This is pie. This is it. It's nice to know that well, it seems like it goes on and on forever. We all find the integer where we hop off and we stop counting. That's pie. That's it. What we do from that first 3.14 until we just stop. That's what matters. I remember long time ago, having a conversation with B about seeing someone 404 and what happens after that. And the meaning of continuing on. And I still don't really know. I don't think we ever will. Maybe the meaning of this is that things do end. Everything. Yeah. Even this. Even pie. It ends. Yeah, well, I'll keep going as long as you do. <laughs> I'll hold you to that, Hess. All right. Can I uh, get another shiny thing, please? I'll always have more shiny things for you, Hess. And I've got one of those, like, one that's just, like, it's just <laughs> locked strands. <laughs> It's like what they sell at the Hollywood Bowl. The kids, like, <laughs> the little, like, like <laughs> little neon. Yeah. Look Thank you, that. Kuka. And I'll do a little twirl. You're a masterpiece now. Thank you. And you're a Kisa. You too. Mm. Cool. 
Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah. Sorry, can I just say that like you you find the integer where you jump off? That's absolutely <laughs> brilliant, Ben. Yeah, no like, kidding. Like, damn. That was so <laughs> profound. <laughs> Yeah, we're um, just gonna face our own mortality tonight. It's cool. It's yeah, fine. yeah, that's, that's good. That's all. Cool. I have hey, something guys. to cap it off. So <laughs> it's uh, it's right. dialect and philosophy. Okay, are y'all ready for this? It's like it was meant to be. <laughs> oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> Symbol of hope. And oh, right. as I was sitting here thinking about this and the change of what pi means. I think the symbol of the lowercase i as an imaginary number, where it's like the last thing that is kind of unknowable to us, because it's something that we literally cannot compute. Um, we can approach the limits of it, but we can't ever compute it. And so I just think of the lowercase symbol of i. <laughs> cool. I love it. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm sold. Like, I, yeah. I'm not going to think of anything better than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's and brilliant. I think this is kind of going off the rails a little bit, but I think I would like to bring this as a group conversation. Um, so, like, all of us here. And I'm setting the scene. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it opens with um, Whirls dragging a little body of Beep back to our isolation, back to the museum. And we're all there working on Beep. And yeah. That's, I think that's how I would like to set the scene, though. Uh, help! 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 Save him! Save, you gotta save Beep! Okay, you gotta okay, save okay, Beep! Okay, 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 bring, bring, bring Beep in. Bring Beep in. Oh, he oh, just, he ran! Glitch and glitch. <laughs> Yeah, he, he just decided to zoom off over the ridge and, well, he may have taken a magnet or two, and I, I went after him and he just, on this I found this. basket. I, I, I avenged, I, but. Whirls, oh, whirls, oh, whirls, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We'll. I'm going to remove the fluorida magnet now. Yeah. Oh. Fluorida? What? I don't know, it seems insane. I'm going to keep I mean, it over right. here. It's too many colors. I don't care for it. <laughs> all right. Oh. Now, oh. Um, we're going to have to see. Beep is um, pretty mangled. Um, do we have crunch, any good I need you to hold Beep up, please. Will do. Will do. Four different uh, claws uh, wrote down and then uh, lift the body of Beep up and twist him and arrange him in whatever way that Hutch needs. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, Kuka, I don't think this is something that I can do. I need your delicate claws. I can shine some light, but that's all I can do for this one. I think you're going to do excellent well, Hutch. You're going to have to guide me a little bit. This isn't necessarily my forte. All right. Well, glad you got that fluorida magnet. Uh, <laughs> do, do you want it? Uh, no, no. Later, I later, gave, later. Okay. I oh, gave that up. Eons <laughs> ago. Work on All right. Again. Yeah. Is he is he savable? Can, uh, can we? Is he? Is he a so pie left in him? You know, I think he has a little bit of pie left in him. Uh, let me see if I can reboot. Little beep. Hug oh, glitch, please let this work. And I'll, I'll do my magic of... Oh, you're and... such a Kisa. You got this. <sighs> beep. 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 Glitch and beep.
Beep. Is that Beep. is that you? Are you there? Come on, Beep. Come back to us. Come back to Pi. You have Pi left. I I don't have Pi. I have just I now. Just I? <laughs> See, this is why we should never have given the poor Beep magnets. Now he's saying things that are completely unknowable. Beep. I didn't know what it would do to him. He, he's, you gave well, this to him? <laughs> oh, I, worlds. I didn't know you did magnets. It was a world. fridge. It's a fridge magnet. It's just a tiny dose. It was just enough to relax him. He was freaking out. I thought you were about to There was so huh? much buffer happening. I just wanted to. Guys, guys, speak, 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 speak. Speak. I, I hear. My, my friends, do not. Do not buffer and rust yourselves over this. I have, I have been beyond the veil of Skriak, and there is hope in the unknowable. Our future may not be set in stone as much as it appears to be. Hmm. I think Beep. Right. I, I think Beep may be on to something. I think. The unknowable means that we can do anything. You know, with Pi ending or not, I don't know. I don't know what kind of Griak lies for all of us. Today, tomorrow, hundreds of years into Pi, I don't know. But it seems like there's something after Pi. Just I. Well, maybe that Pi isn't as knowable as we think it is. Hmm. That's comforting to know that Skriak may not be the end of it. And there, there may be more. Does that mean that there is more to this in general than just the job? Do we have what I do know? As we have our own little eye right here. Yes, we do. Bop beep on the head. You know, gently. Gentle Kuka. Bop, beep. <laughs> do you have your engraving set handy? Marcus. Always. Now, uh, beep. This wasn't possible before, but uh, some of us who've been around a while and may have done too many magnets. Sometimes we get little etchings in our sheet metal and our plates. No chassis. I think you deserve one. Little eye. Oh, you see a, a bright spark of light behind uh, behind Crutch's eyes, and for inside his interior cabinet where he keeps all of his collections, a, a claw shoots down, rummages around in the toys down there, and pulls out a little white. Um, looks like a stick, and as it kind of retracts up and out into the open, you see a little like white six inch controller with a few buttons A and B, a little joystick, and on the back is some faded blue lettering. Could be a W, could be a little like remnants of an, a lowercase I. And you probably suspect there was a second I after <laughs> the first one. And now and he'll show it. Maybe it looks like it looks like this. I think that's our symbol. I think that's about as knowable as I can ever be. What do you think, Beat? Sure, why not? <laughs> It'll only burn a little bit, I promise. <laughs> Make you look very cool after. Yep. Not so innocent anymore, little eye. All the cool kisses have it. <laughs> Engrave a little eye. All right. Uh, is that all of us? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So, this. Uh, marks the start of the legacy phase. 
Now, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal each of you one card. And it uh, tells you something about what the end of the isolation in this language might look like for you. So, uh, take, take a few seconds. Um, um, oh, looks like not everybody yeah, got I'm still one. waiting on one. Yeah, I'm, I'm me, as well. I don't have one. Yeah. One day, Oop. rule 20 will deign to give us one. <laughs> give me a sec. Uh, just make sure that there's everybody getting one. Uh, yeah. Hmm. No, for some reason, it's dealing them to everybody except RJ this time. So what I will do is, because I have the physical cards with me, uh, oh. I will recall oh. that one, assuming I can. Whoops. Um, and I will just use a physical one. Okay. Can I recall just one card? That's the question. I mean, I can I can write mine down. And if you need to recall all of them. Yeah, do you want me to just... Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try that. Um, in play hands four. Yeah, cool. Okay. So, I would like to deal one card. Two. Tell you what, I'll do everybody but me. And hopefully that'll... Uh, okay, I see. Sounds viable. Yeah. Oh, still doesn't like it. Do we need to throw out our old cards? Because I still have a card out. Um, couldn't hurt. Okay. How do we do that again? We just drag it just and then delete it. And delete it. Okay. What I'm going to try and do instead, because I have enough cards, definitely, is I'm just going to do one person at a time. So, one for Ben. One. Four, Emmy. One, four, Carrie. One, four, RJ. And just making sure, one, four, me. Hey, problem solved. Yay. Okay. So. Audience, this will be a little bit of a spoiler for you because you're going to be able to see mine, whereas you won't be able to see the others. Uh, okay. Obviously, if you have any ideas for the end of Beat's story, feel free to share them in the chat. Yeah. Um, oof. So with these cards, guys, we're not necessarily going to play them onto the onto this play space. It's just a prompt for you to, you know, develop that epilogue that you're going to narrate. And uh, let me know when you're all ready, and I will read the uh, introduction to the legacy phase. Cool. I'm ready. Okay. okay. Me too. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, so is that four out of five or five out of five? Good to go. I think we're five out of five now. All right, awesome. <clears throat> so as we enter the legacy phase and finally the isolation ends, our programmed mission is now obsolete. Do we fight on without end? Or do our routines for self-preservation take over? Some consider the unthinkable. Do we join them and abandon our defining task? Can we? Mm. Any, 
anybody who would like to could go first, or I'm prepared to do so myself. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go. Okay. So, as I, you know, brush around and start looking at the rebel and seeing how much the world has changed and how much all of us have changed physically and I think a little bit of our processors are probably functioning a little bit different now. I look out and I start gathering the bots that didn't survive, that bricked, and I I like to still call it bricking. I don't like to remember Skriok too much. But I collect the ones that can't be repaired and I create like a little mausoleum of unrepairable bots and I just set them up in their own spaces so people know who they were, what they did. And I search as far as I can to find any survivors of our people, try to repair them or help them go into Pi or I. And I don't salvage parts to use on other bots. I just move them on to their respective places, no matter what that might be. I can go next. Um, so after seeing the... Uh the near Skriok experience of his little friend, uh, little friend Beep, uh, uh, uh Crutch. <clears throat> Crutch found a new, uh, a new, a new, a new mission. A new mission was created inside him. And he turned from protecting and, and preserving what was on this earth to eliminating these invaders entirely and he found himself becoming more angry and frustrated at, the, at their persistence to the point where he becomes reckless and one day leads a charge into the enemy front lines that he knows he can't win that he knows is an insurmountable until one day he doesn't return can go next um, I'll say that uh, as Beep watches the strange visitors to this world gradually tear through the walls of the museum tear through the exhibits to the point where it the very place itself collapses in on itself and all that is left is a heap of dust and rubble, much in the way that it was when we first began our task. He inclines his little alarm clock head to regard his new etching of the eye symbol and turns, totters away into the wilderness uh, attempting to be that symbol himself for any that he encounters and telling whoever he can that Pi may be unknowable but our eye is knowable through the stories we tell of one another for me for Kuka, at the end, when things start to be unsurmountable, there's not really one big fight anymore, so much as it's just a general fading. For me, I wasn't ever really fighting to keep the museum as much anymore as much as keep my friends. 
keep the Tisa alive just a little longer. Keep our masterpiece in ourselves, our, our dignity inside going. But towards the end, I found some bits, some bits of that horse, those invaders. I thought, what can I do with that? And I found some of our bits. I thought, what could I do with that? I thought, maybe it's time to create something completely new. Something that will rise out of this. Something that will evolve be different. And maybe in that way we'll become something new, something unknowable. But us, our creensis, survives. Becomes something beautiful. That's what matters. With the end of the museum and the loss of all that I knew and cared for, I am also at loss. I don't know where to go or what to do. My whole existence and purpose was, well, I thought was to collect kitchen items, but with beeps near 404, that became obsolete and I was left with nothing and feeling alone. I wandered. I wandered through the wreckage. I saw the bots that we lost, those that are 404 those that will never come back. And I felt, felt shame. Shame that all I ever cared about were trinkets, things of no meaning to anyone else. Things I thought had meaning, but really in the end are meaningless. Nothing is important as I slowly move away and try to find importance in life and see that maybe, maybe I was not put here to do this one thing, but it doesn't matter anymore. All that matters is that along the way I found my Kisas, my friends, and maybe that is what is important. I go searching for more. Everyone, uh, this has been Dialect by Thorny Games. Uh, we are now the only speakers of this dialect, and that, dear audience, includes you. Uh, thank you for coming along on this journey with us from beginning to end, uh, as interesting a beginning as it was. Um, <laughs> we were so cute! <laughs> You're our glitch and pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we dearly hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we certainly enjoyed uh, bringing this wonderfully uh, cerebral and uh, deep game about something very important uh, to all of you um, and we'd like to invite you to join us in our post-show discord hangout that we will be in for a few minutes just after we wrap up here um, and I'd also like to remind you if you're not going to join us to uh, instead join us for the gauntlet on Friday that we'll be uh, playing as usual starting at 5 p.m. here at the Adventures Pack Twitch and uh, also, the pack plays returns on Sunday, where Scott and Josh will be venturing into the forest and encountering the many horrors that they might find Whoa. there. Um, and as usual, the relaxing, dulcet tones of Scott as he paints away on Painting in Place will be with us on Monday. 
Thank yeah. you once again for joining us, everyone. And uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah.